Hello and welcome to One Stop Co-op Shop Stream, your one stop for co-op news and playthroughs. And today we are playing through A Feast for Odin. We're going to play with the Norwegians expansion. And um, yeah, this is one of my favorite games. We're doing a solo Euro game series, uh, or at least I am. Uh, I'm really enjoying playing these Euro games lately uh, solo. And at the end of the stream, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I feel about this one compared to some of the other ones I played and just how it stands on its own as well. But let's get into it. So when you first look at the board, which isn't even really set up yet, so I just wanted to tell you what expansions I'm playing with. I am playing with the Norwegians expansion. What I'm gonna do is shuffle all the islands. So there's normally there's A islands, B islands, C islands, and D islands. There's four from the base set, four from the expansion. I am just gonna shuffle them up and see which ones come out um, and get them randomly. I'm also using all the decks. They recommend when you first start, you learn with the A deck, then you go to B and C and it just uh, varies it up a little bit. But I am shuffling them all together. So uh, yeah, so there's that. And um, that's it. That's basically what I'm doing for the expansions. Don't worry, I am gonna explain to you how the rules work and the, how the game works. But what is the Norwegians add, um, and why am I choosing to play with Norwegians? Well, first of all, as we've seen, it adds additional island options for you to get, and I'll explain what all this means later. But really, it actually simplifies the board a little bit. I know you're looking at this like, what is going on here? If you've never played before, you're like, this is a simplified board, but it's really not that complicated once we get into it and once I start explaining to you what the actions do. I'm not gonna explain all of them at the beginning of the game. I'm gonna go through the basics of the game, but you're basically doing worker placement to place on these spots throughout the game to help you get polyominoes, which will you will build up on your board. And you're gonna basically try to cover your board uh, surrounding certain areas, covering up certain things. Um, you're going to get uh, other uh, boards potentially as the game goes on. That's what these islands are. These are more boards basically that give you more opportunities to cover up things, but they all basically work the same. You could get these boards over here. Again, more opportunities to cover up spaces. So it's really a, a worker placement game with some polyomino building. And worker placement at solo is an interesting concept. I know we've tried to work on this ourselves and it's not easy to do. So what they do here is you block yourself. So between rounds, and there are gonna be seven rounds in the game, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Every time you take a worker off, it's signifying a new round. So, um, so there are gonna be seven total workers or seven total rounds in the game. And the way it works is, um, each round you're gonna take off new workers. Now, if you were playing live and in person, you would just have two different colors here and every other round would be a different color. And when you take your new workers off, you leave your other ones on the board. So uh, you'll see how it works here on the mod, but it's a, it's a very interesting way of doing it and a very neat way of doing it. Hey, Snow's here. Snow says, good evening, morning, whatever. Thank you, Snow. Good, uh, it's, it's still morning for me. It's 11 o'clock here. Um, so thanks for joining us, Snow. And uh, yeah, um, let's get started. So the basic concept of the game is you're gonna be collecting these polyomino pieces. There's more over here. These are the kind of weirder shapes you can get as well. You can get those through trading or plundering or doing several different options to get those. But uh, you'll also be getting these goods here and you are basically Viking clans doing Viking type things. You could fish, you could whale, you could hunt, you can do all these things and you are trying to collect these tiles and get them on your board, like I said, to block up certain areas. The way, the general concept is, every tile has four types. So what I mean by that is this two space tile, which blocks up, if you look at any board, I'm, this isn't my board, but I'll just block it up. It's gonna block up two spaces, right? This has four states. It can be either orange, which is, the, so orange is always the lowest, then you go to red, then green, then blue. So it goes from orange, to, I'm sorry, you flip it over, which red will be on the other side of that. And then the nice part for the mod is they have states. So the next thing you go to is green, and then you could flip the green over to get to blue. And the reason that's important and where you're gonna use certain polyominoes is this. For your board, blues can basically go anywhere. They can be touching each other, it doesn't matter. Greens cannot touch other greens, except on the corners, on the diagonal. You can also place coins and you could place ore, which is one of the uh, three different resources you can gather in the game. You could place coins and ore on your board as well to help fill in spots. But the big key here is 
green cannot touch green. So you have a lot more limiting options with green than blue, which basically you could put anywhere. Now the way food works is you need to feed your people at the end of every round. And so to feed your people, you're gonna to need to fill in all these spots again with polyominoes. You're gonna use orange and red for your feast. Now, you cannot have two orange or two red next to each other, uh, and you can use coins also to bribe the people and not actually feed them, I guess, uh, <laughs> but to bribe them, pay them off. Now, they are also a little bit picky, so let's say you had a red here, and you wanted to do another one of these orange. This one would have to be placed vertically, because if you feed them the same food twice, the second one has, or only one of them can be placed horizontally. The rest have to be placed vertically because they are not happy with you for feeding them the same stuff. Now, good news is you will get uh, food income harvests every few rounds, and that's gonna be the same for every person regardless of how you've done your polyomino action on your board. So you'll notice up here is where it shows you what the harvests look like. In round one, you're just getting a few of the goods here. In round uh, the one, two harvest, you'll be getting one more good. You'll be getting this longer um, uh, grain over here. And then you're gonna add a cabbage when you harvest one through three. And then a final one, you're gonna also harvest some fruit as well. So, and that tells you, the nice part is everything's pretty well graphically designed. So this is harvest one on turn one. Then you're gonna get harvest one, two. Then you're gonna get harvest one through three. And then you're gonna get harvest one through four. So that is the basics. Um, we'll talk about the mountains when we take stuff from them. That's a way to get some resources though. And then as you can see, we start with some goods at the very beginning of the game. So let's go ahead and do our first round. We have five workers for the first round of action. And we are going to start placing those on the board. Um, now that I'm looking at it, uh, so they'll eat coins instead of food. Interesting, says Snow. Yes, I assume that means you're paying them off. And now that I'm looking at it, I can't remember if the first round you start with five or six workers. I don't remember if you take that first worker off in the first round or not, or if you skip that step. Because I just played the other day, but we may have been extending the game by a round every time we've played now that I'm looking at it. Because I feel like you want to take that first worker off, uh, even in the first round. Uh, but I'll go over the round mechanics and things like that and what all those action spaces do kind of as we take them. Um, but yeah, if anybody knows the answer to that, well, I guess Snow doesn't know the answer. Uh, <laughs> So let's look under setup here before your first game. All right, let's look under setup real quickly and make sure I get this right. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, do, do, all right, do, 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 do. So the course of play, it talks about that. It doesn't say you skip it during the first round. And yes, it shows you taking your Viking off in the first round. So I'm assuming you do everything even in the first round of play, which means I think I have been doing an extra round the entire time that I have played. Interesting. Now this is a personal shed. They want me to get horses with this shed and they also, or another option is to get collect extra wood by the end of the game. So I might build that shed throughout the course of the game. That is one of the things added in Norwegians. We got this over here too. Huh, I may have been extending the game every time I played it. All right, so this is our starting things. We get one of each good here, and then we got this shepherd here, which is another thing, which is saying, if you have at least two sheep, um, then you can get these things when you play this card here. So my card in my hand, my occupation card is telling me I want sheep. This is telling me I want horses. So they're telling me, they want me to raise livestock, uh, which is all in this market livestock area here. So maybe, just maybe, I will be doing that uh, at the beginning of the game. Do, 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 do. Okay, so let's talk about what you do on your turn. The nice part is there's this uh, right here. So the first thing you're gonna do is get a new Viking. Uh, so let's start our first round and we will get our first Viking. So that took it off of the first round marker. So now we have six Vikings for the first round. This board looks complicated, but it's a lot of similar actions but uh, the way it works is if you place anywhere on this first action, you're gonna have to use one Viking. If 
you place anywhere on this second row of actions, you're gonna have to use two Vikings. So it's basically a lot of them are more expensive versions of the same kind of an action. If you go in the third row, you get three Vikings and, or you have to pay three Vikings, but you do draw one of these occupation cards here. If you do four Vikings, or if you do this row, you have to pay four Vikings, but you are going to get to play one of these cards and do what it says. Now, this one is a yellow card, which means you do it just one time as soon as you play the card. So I want at least two sheep before I would ever play this occupation card. So I don't want to play that turn one for sure. Um, and or you could do that before or after. So I could actually get sheep on turn one here and then... Um, go ahead and use them to do this action over here, which might be something to consider. This final row is new to the Norwegians, but it's basically with your last one or two workers, you can play on this final one. But once you do that, even if you have, let's say I did that for my first action and I'd still have, you know, if I use two, I'd still have four workers left. I'm done my turn. I'm basically signaling that I am finished by taking this row. These are better actions that are basically similar to everything you're doing here. These are just better versions of those actions. If you use one worker to do it, you just do the action that it says there. If you use two workers, then you also get to play a card from your hand. So, you know, spending more workers does let you do uh, more stuff. But they're telling me they want me to do an animal strategy. So, I am going to focus on that. So, I need three coins though, and I need some wheat before I can even consider getting these two animals. So that's not gonna happen this first round. So I'm not gonna focus on things. Now I can do things like I pay three coins here to get a wheat and any one animal. So you can see the symbology becomes pretty simple after a while. Here I'd pay two coins and one of these to get one of, or to get two of these type animals. Oh, and sheep are in there. And I do have that good. So the only thing I don't have to get sheep here on round one. Uh, oh, wait a minute. That's not that. Oh, up here. <laughs> the only thing I don't have to get sheep in round one are those two coins. So let's figure out if I can find a way to get some coins. Here we go. Here's a spot that gives me two coins. All right. And this also gives me um, some other things. So it gives me two coins. It gives me one of these flax over here. It also gives me a mead to help me feed. The other thing it does, though, is uh, if I had had horses already, it would give me one of these grain long four orange pieces right here. So I'm going to start by doing that. When I click there, it takes two of my workers and puts them over there. So now I've spent two workers because it is in this two worker column. I'm going to get two coins uh, again so I can use it over here. I am going to get one of those three long orange and one of those two long red. All right. So I am going to get a three long orange. I'm going to get a two long red. And uh, I'm going to get two coins. All right. So that is my first uh, action. I'm done here. Now, I'm not sure if I was supposed to get that harvest again. I don't think so. But I do think I was supposed to take this worker here. Um, so, oh, I didn't go over the phases of the round. So you do that, then you get your harvest. You know what, I'm gonna get my harvest. I might be doing this wrong. I feel like I'm doing this wrong because I already have all these goods here. I feel like they did the harvest for me. So I'm not gonna do that harvest step. So I, I've skipped some steps here. The next thing you do is you're gonna flip over the islands and you're gonna add coins to the islands you didn't flip over. Well, actually, again, if you look at your player sheet, we don't do that in round one and you can see where the harvests are here, we start that starting in round three. So we just skip that for the first time through. Then we draw a new weapon. Well, they did that for me. So I've got extra snares. Now there are some actions that want you to use snares. These actions here, these actions here, these actions here. Whenever there's a snare in the picture, that means um, they uh, snares will help you do that task. So these are all options for me. Um, for things to do because I've got two snares. So that's good. And I got a bow and a spear. So I might be doing this as my first single action at the end of the round if I have workers left. But uh, yeah, I had kind of skipped ahead. So sorry about that. Yeah, I'm trying I'm trying to figure out now whether I've been doing the right the first round right or not because I don't know if I've ever taken that off. I might have been extending the game by one round every time I played it, which will make Mike angry uh, if, if he made me, or if I made him play an extra round the other day. All right. So we take our first worker off. We do all of that stuff. All right. So 
for two workers, I go over here and I do those actions. I don't get the grain because I don't have a horse. So now I have four workers left. So for my next action, I'm gonna go ahead and do what I said over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pay. Now when I do this, I get to draw a card and that's why it drew me this trade, uh, trade man, tradesman over here. Um, so that's telling me I wanna get these blue uh, three length things and I could trade them in for a four either length or a, a two by two. Uh, thing over here and that's when it's blue like this that means unlimited anytime you want to do it you can trade those things in but what do I get over here uh, so first I gotta pay I'm gonna spend my two money I'm gonna spend this and do to do 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 I'm gonna buy two sheep so basically I'm trading in this situation so I'm trading for two sheep now, the interesting part about sheep is they are gonna give you victory points at the end of the game, two per sheep you have. And we'll see later there is, oh, so I, I said draw a card, but then we're doing our actions now. And then we'll do determined start player and everything else after that. All right, so I took that action and I got myself two sheep. Now I have my final uh, worker here. So I am going to go over here and do an elk hunt as we were talking about. Now, because I'm only placing one worker here, I don't have two left, I don't get to play a card from my hand. So the way hunts or anything with dice work is you're gonna roll whatever dice it says, and for the hunts, you're trying to get a low number. Now, whenever you roll a dice, you get to roll it three times, and you stop whenever you want, but you don't get to roll it, like you roll once, you determine if you're gonna stop or not, and then you roll again, you determine if you're gonna stop or not, and then you roll again and determine if you're gonna stop. You're trying to get for these hunts the lowest number possible. So let's go ahead and roll this orange, D8. That one would be amazing. Let's actually roll it though. That's a five. Okay, so I'm not gonna take that because I would have to discard five cards worth of stuff so here you can see, you can discard these traps in order to get the elk hunt. Now, if I fail, you do get stuff for failing as well. In fact, you always get what it shows on the left here. So I'd get another snare card, I'd get another spear card, and I'd get another bow card. So not only do these help you do this task, but if you fail at doing the task, they will also give you the bonus of getting those things again. So, uh, do, 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 do. All right, so that was my first attempt at that. That did not go according to plan. Uh, and so we will roll it again. Uh, all right, so now I rolled a one, so I will definitely take that. Now, I am wanna keep my snares because I can use my snares for doing this action over here or this one over here. So I gotta determine, do I wanna do whaling or do I wanna do uh, hunting? And I'm gonna go ahead and discard my spear. So that means I probably won't be going for whaling anytime soon. And I will hold onto my bow and my snare cards. All right, so when I did the elk hunt, I go ahead and I draw a card from the deck. So that's the red uh, back cards. And I get one of these green antlers over here. And I draw a random card from the top of the deck, which replaces my spear. Of course it does. <laughs> Snow says this mod is really well done, it seems. Yes, I agree. Uh, so failing works like forward, uh, fail forward mitigation. Next time you hunt, you'll have better chances. That's exactly right. And for some of these spaces, so let's look at this hunting, uh, laying a snare over here, which I'll probably do at some point here soon. So we roll the orange dice again. You can use snares and you can use wood to pay for that. And you'll see woods used for a lot of things. How do you get wood? You get wood and stone and stuff from the mountains. There's other ways of getting it. But when you take this action here, it says take two from the mountains. This says take three from a mountain. This says take three from a mountain uh, and draw two cards. This is three from a mountain and you're gonna upgrade two of your goods. Uh, and I'll explain what upgrading means in a minute, but I basically explained that at the beginning. You're gonna go from orange to red, red to green, green to blue. So upgrading good takes a red good in this. So you get to upgrade three goods for that spot right there. So you could upgrade this one to red, you could upgrade this one to green, and you could upgrade this one to green if you wanted. So that is all that upgrading means. And as you can see, this game is pretty, I mean, it looks way complicated, but it is way simpler than it seems at first glance. All right, so I am out of workers now. So I'm completely done. Um, I got my Elkhorns, I got my, my uh, card, so I'm done. So now we determine start player. In a multiplayer game, 
Ah, Ural's here. Hello, Ural. Uh, yay, A1. <laughs> Welcome, Ural. Thanks for joining. Uh, so, determining star player, and again, in solo it doesn't matter, because really you're just blocking up spaces for yourself. I'll show you how that works in a minute. Um, but, uh, so determining star player, whoever placed the last worker on the board gets to go first in the next round. So now we're going to determine income, and that's where we go to our board, and that's where we start placing stuff on our board. So we can place things on our board, but whenever you cover up a coin spot, a coin spot down here, you need to cover it using, um, you must cover everything below it and left of it. So an example, I can't use orange here. I know that, again, it tells you right here what you can use, but let's say I could. I could block up the zero spot because everything left of it and below it are covered. Here, this works too. I covered up everything left and below of the one. Uh, even if I did this, I could do it, obviously. Now, if I did this, I couldn't because this spot is open. So I cannot cover that coin while there is a spot left of it or below it that is still available or open. So that is how you're determining your income. I am actually not going to get a coin this turn. I could do this to block up the zero and start getting one coin a turn. I'm not gonna do that though, because you also wanna surround these spots here. You don't have to, you could certainly, and again, this would be an illegal move because I can't cover up the two over here while I am still have this stuff available at the bottom. So this would be a legal move. I can cover it though, I am allowed to, but I don't necessarily want to. So what I'm gonna do is actually use this horn here to cover these spots here. So I'm gonna be getting an ore every single turn. So remember I said there's other way to get wood? Well, here you go, here's a wood space when you surround that. And it does include diagonals when you're talking about surrounding. You have to surround diagonals as well. So I could put this here and I will be getting an ore every turn. But I don't have to make that decision right now. Right now it's income phase and I'm not gonna put anything on my board and I'm not gonna get any income. So I collect my income, which is zero. Now, your animals breed. I do have animals to breed though. All right, so the way most animals work, and by most animals, there are uh, four different types of animals in the game. There are sheep, there are cows, there are horses, and there are pigs. The way these three animals work, sheep, cows, and horses, and by the way, these are red, you'll notice, so you could use them for the feast um, if you wanted to. Now, not suggested, because uh, they're victory points, and uh, hopefully you will get uh, food in other ways. But, so, for these animals, you flip them over. That means it's pregnant. If you have at least a pair, then you flip them over and you will um, they become pregnant. The next time that we have animal breeding, we flip it back over and then we add a new sheep from the supply. So right now the sheep is pregnant. Even if you have four sheep though, only one of them becomes pregnant at a time. Doesn't matter the number you have. But if I go into another animal, like again, remember here, they want me to go horses. So if I go horses, then um, then those will breed uh, as well, similarly to how the sheep breed. All right, but that is done for that. Uh, I did my animal breeding step. Then we go to the feast. So now you gotta feed the peoples. So I'm gonna do a uh, flax over there. Then I'm gonna do this over here. Now, if I had a coin, I would've used it here, but instead I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use some peas to fill in this last spot over here. Um, now again, if I wanted to use the horn of mead, if I use the second horn of mead, it would have to go vertical. So that's the reason I didn't use the mead. Plus, it's harder, early at least anyway, to get red stuff than orange. Because orange, you get a feast every single round. All right. So, we are over here. Um, we have fed our people. And then this just gets put back to the supply. So, deleted. We did our feast. Next, we get our bonuses for surrounding. Now, you have another opportunity to place stuff. Actually, you can place on your board at any time. So even while other people are going. So a lot of games, when other people are going, you don't have a whole lot to do. You do. You can always be focused on building your board, stuff like that, while other people are going, or determining what spaces you want to go to next. So there's a lot of opportunities to do building and stuff um, throughout the course of the game. So uh, I'm gonna surround this here, and because I have it surrounded, now when we get to our bonuses section, we get bonuses from all the stuff we have surrounded. So I am going to go ahead and take this ore. Now what I like to do 
for the mod, and even for the real game, I like to put a selection of what I'm getting from my bonuses off to the side. So it's just a matter of grabbing those things. I look here to see what I need rather than re-looking at my board every time. It's just important to make sure it's covered. All right, so we got some comments here. Snow says, all right, this is one of the block yourself in the next round mechanisms. Yes, that is right. We'll see that in one second. And Andre says, yes, yes, you can cover the ore. Um, yes, yep, I surrounded the ore to get the ore. Uh, the one thing that's missing is snapping the polyominoes into the grid. Yeah, but I think it's okay. It, it's fine. All right, so that is the bonus section. Now we're going to update the mountains. So we didn't take anything from the mountains, but every round you're going to remove a good, the left good from each mountain, and then you're going to add another mountain tile. So this is just going to constantly get you deeper and deeper. And you'll notice you can even get coins from the mountains at some point. You can get ore, you can get stone, you can get wood. So as you go in, you're going to get uh, the opportunity to get more and more stuff. Then we're going to remove all our place Vikings for the board, but no, not in the solo game. Only on round two and beyond do we do that in the solo game. So that's it. Now we're back to step one, which is you get your new Vikings uh, in the solo board. Again, you're not going to get new Vikings. So again, there would be two Vikings of, let's say, red here in a normal game. Instead of these all being green, there'd be like two red Vikings here. Then there'd be two green here. Then two red here. Then two green here. Two red, then two green. That way you are getting more Vikings each turn because technically you're only getting one Viking. But again, you wouldn't have any red at the beginning um, and then you'd get more here. So that's the way it normally work. But what it's going to do is in this game, it's actually going to change them to these black solo pawns over here. Just so you know, those spaces are blocked up. So let's go ahead and start the next round. As you see, all the places I had workers, they um, they did that. Now we're going to get our new harvest. Now we look at round two. I'm pretty sure actually we do get a harvest in round one then. I'm try ah, I wish I knew. All right. I, I feel like I should figure this out because I want to make sure I'm showing you correctly. Do, 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 do. It's showing you everything but setup. Why am I missing setup here? Um, this is one of those games, and, and you know I only play games that we own here. Jerry's got the copy of this game that we own, so I don't actually have the physical rules in front of me. And I've been playing it a lot lately, but this never came up because I just noticed the first round thing is there. So where is setup? Uh, is this setup? These are things you... Oh, setup. Here we go. All right. Do, 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 do. All I care about is what we start with on our board at the beginning of the game. So you take, get your Vikings, the right thing square. Each player takes a thing. Do, 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 do. Each player takes 12 Vikings. Set up the mountains. You set that stuff up. Why doesn't it tell you what goods you start with? Maybe you're not supposed to start with any, but I don't know why you'd get a horn for the first round then because there's no way you have a horn surrounded. Ah, here you go. You take this and a horn. Okay, here it is. Game start. Oh, is that really in the upper left corner? Look at that. It tells you right here. So you get one of each occupation. All right, so the graphic design in this is amazing. And you get a horn and you get a gray occupation card. So there's two types of occupation cards. There are doo -doo -doo, over here. There are the light brown ones, which are the starting occupations, and then there are the dark brown ones, which are the ones you're going to collect throughout the course of the game. So this shepherd is a starting occupation that I started with at the beginning of the game, and then the tradesman is somebody I got throughout the course of the game. Awesome. All right, the graphic design for this game is just amazing. So I should have paid attention and looked in the upper corner, and I would have seen what you start with. Uh, all right, so. Uh, we, so I've done everything right. I do think, though, I forgot we forgot to hit start player last time. And the first round, we basically started with five workers when I played with uh, the guys the other day. So one round longer than it should have been. I will tell the guys that because I do think that makes a difference. All right. So we are at the start of round two. Do, do, do. Round two. All right. So round two, you start with uh, all the goods that have one to two. Now, in real life, how do you tell? We'll see all these bags with one on it. That means they are the goods one. This are goods one and two. So in this game, I can just copy these and paste them down here. Do, 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 do. There we go. So now I have more goods for this next round. 
And I'm going to have to do some stuff to cover up some stuff. I'd love to get this red horn every round. That would be a nice thing to uh, a goal to shoot for this round, even if I have to use the two coins I get here to help me do that. And by the way, remember, I could put ore on the board, coins on the board uh, as well. So uh, those are all options for me this round. Uh, Snow says too many icons to notice. Yes, there are a lot of icons on the board. It's It looks confusing, but I really don't think it is once you get the hang of it. So I would love to be able to play this sheep this turn. So I have seven workers. I'm gonna to try to only play five so I can do this sheep action at the end. I, because I've got two of these snares here, maybe I get some wood first, then I go lay a snare because I love this giant green piece here. It, it's just a good way to fill up a good portion of your board. The other option for me though is because I have sheep, I can do this, I get an orange food here. And because I have two sheep, I'd get two of these green cloths here. So that's another option because I have those two sheep. If I get to three sheep, then I get three of those. And then it maxes out at three. What I'm going to try to do, I just, I think it's going to be, I'll, I'll be the hunters and farmers this game. Uh, so I'm going to go here to try to do some hunting. But before that, I'd love to get some wood. Because as you see, you can not only use snares, but you can use wood too. Now the nice part about this one is if you fail, you notice this is a two worker row, but if you fail, you get one of your two workers back. So it'll only cost you one if you decide to go here and you are not successful. But I'm gonna get this large thing here. Or I'm gonna at least try to um, start covering a decent portion of my board. So in order to get that though, I'd love to get some wood first. So in order to get resources, I could go here. I can either upgrade a good. Do I need red or do I have, I have a red to do my feast. So I don't wanna upgrade anything right now necessarily. So I'd rather get two things from the board or would I rather get three things and two more cards? Maybe that's a good idea. So if I'm doing that, that's two actions. That would be two actions there. So that's a total of four actions. Then I could do, uh, so that's one, two, three, four. Then I have three left. Then I could do a little onesie action over here, whatever I want afterward. All right, so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna take three goods and a card, two cards. I got another snare, sweet. And I get a sword, which is good for pillaging and stuff. And we'll talk about how to do that in a little bit. Maybe I'll do that. All right, so I do get three goods though. So I can decide, I could take from this one where I'd get a wood, a stone, and an ore. I could take from this one where I'd get a wood and two ore, or, or two stone. Or I could take from this one where I'd get two woods and a stone. I know I was originally going for more wood here, but because I got this snare, I'm actually gonna take these three here. So I get one of each resource. Because ore is good for a lot of stuff including, again, putting on your board. Um, so I'm gonna focus on or, for, or take that one for now. All right, so that was that action there. And now, uh, so I know that I am going to be taking, uh, so I could get an or and two money by taking this single worker action here. Now, multiplayer, I'd have to worry, right? I might be racing people to get to certain actions, but single player, I'm not as worried about it. Uh, oh, I could do a stone for a coin and one of these blue two things also. So let's see. Let's uh, let's see if I get this first. So I'm gonna do this action that costs two of my workers. I roll orange and I am trying to get low again because I need to discard cards equal to the number. And I just spun my resource. All right, two. Uh, two is good enough. Again, you have to decide now. You don't get to roll it three times and then decide. So I'm gonna spend two snares to uh, make that two a zero and pay for that. All right. But I actually not only get this green thing, but I get one of my snares back. So apparently I didn't need to totally snare it. Um, do do do. So which green thing is this? Do do do. Uh, up here. All right. So it's a gray looking thing. It's a two by four. So two by four. That looks like that. Boom. There we have it. So we got this pelt here, which would be perfect for putting at the bottom of the board here. Um, and I can even just put it there now, although I don't have to, and I'll show you why I might not in a second. Cause now I get to do a single icon action. For stone, I could do this. The nice part about that is I could cover this and then I'd have a coin and some stone so I could really surround this, um, which would be good. Cause getting a horn every round is pretty good. Um, so that's one option. I pay a stone to get this stuff. Or I could get two more things from here. Don't forget, I get my income before I have to surround that horn. Uh, oops, forgot, flip tiles. We don't do that this round. Draw a card, we did do that. Uh, and then we're to our actions now. All right, 
So I'm looking for a single action. I could also pay two coins. I don't have any of these boats, so I can't do that action. I can't raid because you need a boat to raid here. To get an island, you need to have boats to sail to those islands as well. I could spend this to get this, but I don't really need more green stuff on my board. So the question is, do I upgrade one? I could upgrade this big green thing to a big blue thing, which would be helpful, uh, obviously, because then I could put more green stuff next to it. I could upgrade that and just take one thing from the supply over here. Or I could dig in two, which is, I think, what I'm going to do. So I'm going to dig in two over here. And again, I'm going to stick with the one I'm going for. And I'm going to get two coins and a uh, another ore. Now, the way this works is coins are not paired together. I don't have to use this. In fact, I could trade this in wherever the coin banks are. Here they are for two singles. They just do that for convenience and ease, but uh, if I'd rather have two singles, you can do that. You can trade them in at any point. Because again, they can help you cover your board. Uh, so Snow says, no, I think it's pretty clear what everything does, not to mention a lot of it is very similar to another action. That's exactly right. And so people see this board. And I'll tell you the reason, so it's on Board Game Arena. The reason I s remembered about this game is on Board Game Arena. Jerry and I played it there one night and I was like, oh God, I forgot how much I love this game. Now the base board is actually more filled than this. Um, and it's and it's less variable from game to game. So the nice part is like this board is used in one to three player games, but not used in a four player game. This board is used in one to two players only, or you flip it over and you have different actions. I mean, they're mostly similar. They just give you more options for the three and four player game. And this board, again, only used for one or two player and they flip it over for three or four player games. So I like how the boards shift in the Norwegians expansion. In the base game, they just gave you extra spots at the bottom that basically said, you can use another spot again or whatever else. I just think there's more options. Plus the animal strategy that we're going for right now, getting animals is not very viable in the base game in my opinion. Uh, oh, I'm trying to get to three coins as quickly as possible to get those horses so that they can breed as much as possible. So I'm to two coins right now. I'm actually going to try to save my coins as much as possible, thinking back. All right, am I down to two workers now? It's, the plan's in place. All right, because I do want to play this sheep thing here also, so that'll give me some more stuff. All right, so I can choose anywhere to go, though. Here, let's do this one because this is kind of a fun action and it's gonna help me cover up some more spaces. So this cost me one ore and then I get to get, so I'm gonna craft something for that ore from this stack down here. So if you notice, this has the crafting uh, icons here. So that means you can smelt these things and it says of value, do, 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 nine or less on the raiding value. So if you look at the swords here, when you pay, pillage and raid, that's how much you need to pillage or raid it. Um, those are all nine or less. So that's how you set up the board. These are all things you can, again, smelt, uh, get, um, and have a pillage value of greater than nine. And then these things up here, when you go, can uh, either be bought, by the way, a lot of these things can be bought. So there'll be coins on them if they can be bought. Uh, and I'll show you later how to do that. Uh, this one has a coin on it too, so does this one. So you can buy some of these goods uh, up here. Uh, so they can be bought or they can be pillaged only. Now this crown is gonna be worth two victory points at the end. The only way you can get it is raiding and pillaging. You need 16 value. And again, we'll talk about that later. Whether I do it or not in this game, we'll still talk about how to pillage throughout the course of the game. All right, so I still don't have any boats. I'm not a very good Viking clan, but anyway. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and take this because for I spend one ore and I get to get one of those items. And because I played two uh, people, I get to play a card from my hand. Remember, it's one or two people. One, you do just the action. Two, you get to play a card from your hand. So again, the iconography fee, very clear. If you have at least two sheep on this card, you get a milk and uh, one of these. Oh, if I had four sheep, I would've got a second one of these, but that's all right. So size four red, and I'm gonna copy and paste it, and then I'm gonna change it to a size for green um, as well. So get some stuff from my sheepies because I have a shepherd. Now this is gonna be worth zero victory points at the end. Some of these cards will be, you'll see this tradesman here. If I get to play it down to the board, will be worth three victory points at the end of the game. So even if I don't use the action, I still really wanna get these cards down, most of them, um, to kinda help me there. But I do have to pay an ore. 
Let's not forget the actual action that I did here, which was pay an order to get one of these things over here. Let's see which of these shapes I think are gonna help me the most. And I'm looking for the highest values too, right? Ooh, this one's good because that'll surround this. Yep, I'm taking the, uh, the scythe here. <laughs> I think that's a scythe, is that what it's called? Uh, from the game scythe? <laughs> All right, so if I put this here, I can then take this scythe and put it right here, conveniently fitting. So if you love polyomino games, I think you can see already that this one is a pretty neat one. All right, to, so I've got, now this I don't have to cover up because it, it counts as covered up. When it, whether it's surrounded or not, doesn't matter. It still counts as a covered up tile. I could cover it if I wanted to, but then again, I wouldn't be getting that for income every round. So notice here though, this is the only space I need to cover up. I can choose to use an or to do that, and actually probably will, but I could also use a coin to do that. If I did a coin, you get paid for the uh, lowest number that's exposed. If I did a coin, I would just get that coin right back in two seconds. But in this situation, I'm gonna use an or to do that. And then, uh, actually, no, I think I'm gonna go for some ships next round. Eh, I'll use the or, because I'm getting an or every round. It's fine. All right. So I'm gonna use an or to do that. And now during income phase, I'm gonna get three. Now again, I could be doing this while other people are taking their turns. Ooh, I got this thing too. But remember, it cannot touch any other green on my board. So I don't have to place it yet, but I could do this. Oh, by the way, victory points are these coins. So all these are negative victory points at the end of the game. So at some point I'm gonna to wanna to cover them. Even if I don't cover the income spots up here, I'm gonna still wanna cover all the negatives as much as possible. Coins are one victory point. These are all negative victory points. So, and then these are victory points because these are coins on those things. Uh, on this board, this starts with six points, but it also has six negative ones. And actually, basically it says it has a horse, you put a horse on it, and that um, will cover all six of your negative points from here. Now, horses themselves are worth six, but the benefit of doing it on this board, as you can see, is I can also get income out of that because all I need is one coin here and a horse and I'm getting two extra income a turn once I build this shed. And you'll notice on this board, you can build with blues and greens and they can even be next to each other. Reds have to be diagonal, uh, but orange. And I'm getting extra food income every turn too. So I want to get this out as soon as possible. The problem is I also want to get horses that give birth before I have to worry about that. So I'm really trying to get the three coins so I can get the horses in two rounds from now. So this is the kind of forward thinking you have to do in this game. In two rounds from now, I wanna be able to buy this so that way I can fill up this, just get by my personal shed and fill it up pretty quickly. All right, so we have prepared ourselves for income. Uh, again, pass first player marker, we don't do that in solo. We get our income. So our income is three coins. So I am just going to take a two and a one, two, and I'll just copy a one here for my three income. All right, so that is that. Let's see what the next thing is. Animal breeding, yay, baby sheep. So we flip our sheep over and we get ourselves a third sheep. Now, again, even if we had four sheep, only one would be coming, come pregnant during the breeding phase. Uh, now we gotta do our feast. Do, 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 do. Sorry, one second, everybody. These bots aren't learning. I actually was going to, um, I was gonna put a subscriber only chat on today and I think we might start doing that for the future. The bots are just getting too out of control right now. Um, so if I go to subscriber only chat, you could subscribe, chat in, and then um, unsubscribe if you want. Uh, I just wanna make sure that uh, that we're not getting all this bot chatter in here. Okay, all right, so that is that. Um, all right, so, oh, feast, that's right. Do, do, do. All right, so I wanna keep this because I need that to get my horses. So I'm gonna use the three again. Then I'm gonna use this little two horn over here. Now I could use the milk if I wanted to instead of the horn, that would still work even though it goes up above here, doesn't matter. But I'm saving that because I can upgrade that to a green or potentially a blue eventually. We'll give them some peas also. All right, so that is the feast done. And I just want to point out now, because we're almost there, there is no harvest in this round. So I'm going to have to use what I have to feed the people for the next round. Don't forget, they'll eat gold as well. You're not really eating. They're, you're, you're buying them something. Uh, <laughs> so there's that. All right. 
So let's see what the next stage is. Get our bonuses. And again, I might want to surround more stuff. So I know I'm going to get a horn every round. And I'm just trying to keep all my income here. Can I surround this wood? I can if I use all these coins, but then I won't have three coins to buy my, uh, oh, I could do it with ore. Okay, I can do this. I don't know if it's worth it. I might be hurting myself in the long run here, but I'm gonna do it. Cause I can put this here, that's not touching any other green and it's not breaking any of the other rules. Again, I couldn't put it here even though I'd love to because not all these spaces below it are filled in. So it's not allowed to be there. So I'm gonna put this here and then I need two coins. So one, two, and now I'm getting a wood every turn starting this turn. I do think it's worthwhile to get that wood income, uh, kind of making this wonky and something I gotta work around, but that's all right. Um, this is uh, this is different and that's what I like about it. So those are gonna be my income every round. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that. Uh, and again, later I could get stone potentially. Uh, I can get uh, this blue thing every turn, which is great. So it's a little, only a little two thing, but as you can see, every piece matters for filling up this income track. So, all right. So that's where we are with our bonuses. We've just collected our bonuses over here. And now we are going to update mountains. So we're gonna go ahead and remove goods. It's always tough to remove gold, that stinks, but we are gonna add a new mountain tile now. Do, 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 do. And then we are going to remove our Vikings from the board. So we do that by hitting in the mod, we hit a start round button. So that does a couple of things for us. It uh, gets us new Vikings. Uh, so here we remove them from the board. Here we get a new one from the next round and that's how we keep track of the round. This is the third round of the game. We don't get income, but if you notice here, we do flip island A, which also means all the other islands get coins on them. So, do do do, where are we? Uh, oh, we're here. So we do our harvest. No harvest this round, we just said that, but we're gonna flip island A, which is island A, this one here. And again, you're gonna sail out to the islands to get them, and this just gets you more income throughout the course of the game. This island A is pretty good because you could surround the pig here and get pigs uh, indefinitely, but we didn't get it, so we now have this island uh, as an option. And, oh, this one's pretty good because I like this blue. Uh, it's like the ant the tools here. Uh, kind of works like looks like this antlers I had up here, except it's blue, which is pretty amazing. A blue C shape. It's amazing how many times you need this like C-shaped item over there. So that's a pretty good one I might want to get. But because we didn't use these other boards, we are going to put two coins above them. And if we choose to take those islands in the next couple of rounds, we will get those coins. And that's going to build up every round. Although next round when this flips, it loses its two coins and A starts collecting coins over here. So that's where we are with this. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So that was the first time we did that. We already collected our card, it's a sword. So they're telling me they want us to pillage. That's what's going on here. But let's do our actions. Uh, I'm not gonna pillage yet. I'm gonna get my horses because that was a priority for me. Now, is there something I can do to get a card? Because I don't necessarily want to play this card. So maybe I play a three action first. How many total workers do I have? I'm gonna need uh, four for horses. And then I'm gonna need only one for the end. So I could do a three, a one, huh. So how much wood do I have? I do have two wood. So I could buy one of these ships over here. So this is only one, oh, two wood here. I can get the ship I need for pillaging. Now, if I wanna pillage as an end of round action, I only, or theft, I guess it's called. I only need this. I have sword, spears, and bows. So maybe I get this ship right now. Um, but that's not drawing me a card the way I wanted, but that's okay. I'm going to take this action, and for one wood, I'm going to buy this um, middle ship over here. So I'm going to delete this, and this is where you get your ships. Now, ships are interesting. They don't go on your board as normal. They go over here. They're worth victory points at the end of the game, and they help you do other actions. So again, if I want to sail away to get new islands, those are these actions down here, and maybe I even do that right now. I can go ahead and sail away to do that. I can also uh, emigrate, make them leave you pay coins equal to the round number 
and you are going to flip them over and go here. So you have less population, so you have less feasting to do, and they're worth more victory points if they're over there, but you can't use them as a boat anymore. So uh, there's some cool stuff you can do with the boats over here, uh, but this one at the end of the round, uh, doo -doo -doo, where is it? Ah, pillaging the end of the round. I just was over there a second ago. Ah, theft. So you roll an orange dice and for theft and pillaging, you're actually trying to get higher numbers and we'll explain how that works in a minute. So, but I do need one of these boats over here for that. So that's why I did that. All right, so I got two. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need four for the end of the round. I'd like one, so I can do a one action now. Does anything get me an occupation card? Uh, down here, I could pay a stone or whatever to play an occupation card. I don't want that. Uh, I can't do raiding because I don't have the right kind of boat. I could do this. Any number of green I could upgrade, but I don't have any green stuff. So let's look at what else we can do. I could turn this into a green. I'm not sure that I want more green. I've got way too much green. I could turn a stone into these things for a single action. Uh, let's see what else. I could buy a small whaling boat if I wanted. Uh, oh, I could buy my shed. Maybe I do that now, uh, especially if I'm getting horses, but I'm not gonna need it for a couple turns. But I could just buy it now while I've got the stuff, or I could go hunting. I could get some food and some green stuff that I could put on my board. Oh, I have sheep. I could turn my sheep into one of these. I don't need all three of my sheep. That would give me stuff to cover up my board. I don't think I wanna do that though. Let's focus on this. All right, for one stone, I'm gonna get a money and a two size blue thingy majigger over here. So I have to pay a stone. So let's go ahead and delete the one stone I have. And I trade that in for a coin also. All right. So now I got my coins, I'm gonna do my, my horse action. So for three coins and one of these, uh, what are they, wheat, uh, grain, I get two of any type of animal of my choice and I'm down to one worker, good. So three coins, gone, wheat, gone, and I'm gonna get two animals of my choice. The horses are worth the most victory points, but they don't really do a lot for you on the board. Like every other animal, uh, you can do stuff with you can from cows you can get milk from sheep you get this over here um, from pigs pigs are oh I said pigs work differently they just breed so pigs if you have two pigs you get another pig uh, each turn so they're really easy to slaughter for things like uh, what like this action here uh, no that's not a slaughter action do 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 uh, so you can get bacon from pigs. So you don't even need to get rid of them for this. As long as you have pigs, you get that. As long as you have this, you get that. Uh, all right, but I did a four, so that lets me play a card down. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this card, even though I don't have this right now. Hopefully throughout the course of the game, I will. And it's gotten me three victory points for the end of the game. So I got that going for me. Alrighty, uh, but I pay three, I get the two animals, I did that, or the two horses, I did that. So that is all done, now I'm down to one worker. We're gonna do the pillaging action, or the theft action, as we said. So these blue actions down here, pillaging and theft, work a little bit differently. You still get to roll the dice three times, but when you roll the dice, you're looking for high numbers because you're gonna add whatever you have to it. So let's see, what am I allowed to add in this space? I can add swords, bows, and spears. Swords, bows, and spears. And then, again, whatever number I get total is the item I can take from this board or this board. Or, you'll notice when all the blue items, they have a pillage value as well. So you can go all the way down to as little as even six to pillage some of the items over here. So let's go ahead and roll it. Again, three up to three times. First time I rolled a two, I'm not keeping that. Second time I rolled a six, huh? I think I'm gonna keep the six. I'd like to get some stuff from this board. Uh, for one item, I can get to that seven. That covers one, two, three, four, five spots. One, two, three, four, five spots. One, two, three, four, five. So it covers, oh, this is a good one. I really like this. That's five also. One, two, three, four, five, six for this cross. So I rolled a six. I'm gonna actually discard I'm not going whaling anytime soon. So I'll discard a spear and I'll discard a bow. Again, spears, bows, and swords. So that gets me to eight. Because I have eight, I am gonna go ahead and take this cross. And these 
uh, items count as if they are blue, so you can cover up more space with them. And oh man, I didn't leave myself a great spot to put this thing. And that's part of the problem sometimes is finding good spots for it. Oh, there you go. That'll work. Um, so I want it down here. Yeah, that works. Okay. So I did that pillaging action. I only use one worker, so I don't also get to lay down a card. Well, I didn't have any of those occupation cards in my hand, so it didn't matter anyway. So that was my last action. Now we collect our income. But before that, I can cover up spots on the board. I am definitely gonna do that. I'd love to be able to cover up all of this stuff. So this can go here. And then, unfortunately, I am so close yet so far from covering this next one, but these things will go there. And now I get my four. Oh, I got a spot here. Darn it, I can't do that. Oh man, that is painful. All right, so I'm gonna take those off the board. I'm gonna leave this like this. Actually, I'll put this here. I don't know that it matters, but yeah, this one spot here is keeping me from covering up that three. And you can't use other stuff to cover it beside orange, gold and green stuff. So looks like that is how I'm doing it. So I get my income of three. So I'm just gonna copy this one, two, three coins. And now we are down to animal breeding, yay! Horses and sheepies breeding. So both of them breed. Um, so both have babies now. And if you notice at the end of the game, you will get more points if they are pregnant. Uh, all right, so that just happened. Now it's time to do our feast. And Snow says, oh no, sheep killing. Uh, it's a sheep killing game. Uh, always sail away and plunder and steal like a Viking. That's right, that's right. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, you can kill sheep, but I'm not killing my sheep. I could kill them to get items, but I haven't. I mean, I have hunted a lot. I mean, I got elk horns and stuff like that. I can't claim to be the nicest of Vikings in the world, but uh, but I've, I've stayed away from killing sheep so far. I'm just farming them. Uh, so I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna put this here. Now I got three more spots. I'm gonna use the milk to cover two of them over here. Actually, why would I use the milk when I have this? Um. The milk can be easily, more easily upgraded. So yeah, I'm gonna use this here, and then I'm gonna pay them off. I got some money. We will bribe them for that last food spots. And that is that, all done. So feast is covered. Now we're gonna get our bonuses. I'm gonna try to get this uh, ore here surround. Ooh, oh no, I can't surround this one unless I can get this spot covered. Uh, I can't surround this, because I'd love to get this blue piece every turn but I can't. Uh, so I only have three coins and one. So one, two, three, four, I'm gonna be one short of surrounding this as well. Now, if I didn't wanna feed my people or if I fed them one less, I could have done that. Um, but if I had done that, I would've gotten a negative three victory point thing for the end of the game, which let's see, what is this good? A stone every turn? Not worth it for me. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. And so I just have surrounded what I had surrounded last turn, which is all this stuff down here. So I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to paste it over here. And that is the stuff I have surrounded. Let's make sure that's still right. Wood, stone, and that. Yep, those are the only thing, three things I got surrounded. Money income's not great yet, but we'll see what we can do about that in the coming rounds. All right, so we got that. Upgrade, mount, update the mountains, remove one from each and add a mountain. I mean, this can just be deleted, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and then take your people off, get a new worker. All right, so we hit the start a round button, which also, as a reminder, gets us our new weapon. That's why we just got this weapon, which is another snare. So it might be time to go snaring here in a minute. Um, all right, so we didn't skip this though. We do need to harvest this round. Uh, and let's look at our board to see for this round, we get harvest one through three. And again, just as a reminder, the numbers are in these bags here. So we get all of this stuff here as our one through three harvest. All right, so that is harvest one through three. We're also gonna flip island B. When we do that, we are gonna add money to islands A, C, and D. And we'll see, maybe I'll even consider getting another, uh, ooh. This one gets me a horse every round and a ton of income. Wow, if I can really shoot up this track, that would be super nice. 
I would love to get a horse every round and a lot of income. And if I surround over here, which is not necessary, but I get that stuff too. So I might try to go to Wexford and it tells me here, it's gonna be the two worker spot and I can use either of these boats. And thankfully, remember last round, I got this boat because without this boat, I wouldn't have been able to pillage over here. So yes, as my first action, I'm gonna do that. And you can see this is a two action spot uh, and it tells you uh, right on this spot too where I can get. Uh, which is this one. So I'm getting Wexford as one of my islands. That's my island. Um, now I'm going to put it over here, this barn I don't technically have yet, so I'll just move that out of the way. So I've got another spot here that I can start filling, and I'd love to do that. So i got a bunch more workers. I'm really going to focus on getting some big stuff to fill this board as quickly as possible, which means snaring again. i got three snares. I feel like that's a good action to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and take the three snare action. Uh, so I roll this for snaring four. Unfortunately, I can't get that to zero. Oh, I can with wood. Oh, but a one, I'd much rather do that. So actually I paid the snare card, but remember one of the benefits of this space is I get it back and I get this big old green thing over here. Now I cannot upgrade stuff that's on my board, but I can upgrade this. So I'm going to keep this off to the side for now. Now I'd like to get some green, other green options here because I want to take this action which for two money lets me upgrade as many uneven green things as I can. So maybe I work on getting this cloth here. Uh, that's a different green. Uh, I guess I could theoretically get rid of my sheep to get rid of all this green. Maybe I would. You know what? I'm doing it. I said I wasn't slaughtering uh, uh, sheep. Guess what? I am. So I'm trading into flax for one of these four things. So where's my flax here? Right here. Badink, badink. Uh, and I get a four long green. You'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. It's gonna be pretty awesome if it works out the way I think. All right, so I'm doing this sheep action, uh, trading in a sheep for, I'm, I'm just trading them. We're not slaughtering them. How about that? We're trading, not trading a pregnant sheep in, uh, trading one of my regular sheep in, and they are gonna help me by trading me back some wool, some skin, and some meat, which has nothing at all to do with the fact that they are slaughtered. It just has to do with the fact that I've traded it for these things. Yes, uh, just because it's hide, whatever, and meat does not mean that they were slaughtered. Rethink your life choices, Vikings. Rethink your life choices. <laughs> All right, but at least they used every part of it, the sheep, if we're going to be nice about it. All right, anyway, so that's done with that. Now, I'm going to do this action here because this is pretty cool. Let's see, how many workers do I have left? Could I get more green stuff? No, I only have three left. All right, so for one worker and two coins. So let's pay those two coins. Oh, I was like, oh no, I don't have two coins. I made a terrible mistake. I did not make a terrible mistake. One coin gone, two coins gone. And now this action says, if you have this boat, upgrade as many different green tiles as you want. We've never upgraded yet. So what does that mean? It means going from green to blue. All these things have now become blue things. So obviously much easier to find spaces for them on my board. Um, yeah, so that seems good. And again, especially because I'm trying to fill this as quickly as possible. I'd love to get this. Oh man, look at this up here too. I can get a blue utensils every turn. Wait, which one are the utensils? Oh, and aren't the utensils the thing I could trade in? I could trade in utensils for an upgrade every turn too. Ooh. So this is actually a pretty good combo. This board works really well with mine. Totally did that on purpose, totally. With that being said, I wanna do the elk hunting. <laughs> I know, like I was just so peaceful a minute ago. Now, unfortunately you can't use swords for elk hunting, but I really want this elk horn. That is like the perfect shape for what I need up there. Um, and I have one worker left, right? Oh no, I have two left so I could play a card. All right, so I don't really have a card to, oh wait, not, don't I really have a card? I literally don't have a card in my hand to play. So I want to take one more action before doing that because there's no reason to use two workers there. So I guess I could have done something else first. Uh, ah, I can get stuff. Oh, and I can upgrade something. Anything here I want to upgrade? Oh, maybe I upgrade my milk bucket. Yeah, all right, I'm going to do that. All right, I'm going to take one item and I'm going to upgrade. Let's see what I can get from the mountains. Looks like a lot of stone only or wood. How much wood do I have? I have wood, I'm gonna get a stone. Uh, well, this is gonna clear anyway at the end of the round, so I'll get this stone. 
Do 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 do. All right, so there's a stone, and I get to upgrade one thing. I remember red upgrades to green, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna upgrade that to that. So basically, you're trading in. You're doing traded. Uh, so uh, Snow says, "Oh no, I knew it. Poor sheep. Sorry, Snow." <laughs> uh, and she says, uh, "It's official, of course. Meat from meat farm, uh, uh, where it's propagated artificially. The sheep lives on. That's right. I just traded it in. That's fine. It's fine." Not a problem. No no slaughtering of animals happened. No animals were harmed during the filming of this episode. Uh, how about that? All right, so we're gonna go after these elk horns here. So we are, no elks were harmed either. We're just taking their horns with our snare traps over here. All right, so I need a three or less. Come on, three rolls. One roll is a six, nope. Second roll is a two. All right, I'm stopping there. All right, so I pay my two uh, goods and I get an elk horn and another weapon card, which is a bow, which will also help me get elk horns in the future if I want to get more elk horns. All right, so uh, now time to start covering the board. Let's see, because I am out of actions, right? Yep, no more workers. Did my last one. Oops, I got the harvest. I flipped over the islands. I got the weapon. So we were during actions. Now we determine star player. Now we get our income. But again, I can fill the board before starting to get income. So it feels like for two spots here, uh, well, for three spots, I can get an extra income. Let's see how much I can get over here, though, because I'd really like to start building this one up as quickly as possible, because I really, again, would love to get a free horse every turn. So now I just need to cover these three to get a three, but if I can cover these eight here, then I get, uh, so do I have anything green sitting around? I do have this wool. So I'm gonna put the wool here because I feel like that's a pretty easy spot to, uh, to avoid in the future. I can put something right on top of it pretty easy. So even though, so I'm getting four income from this board already. Um, now for this five, to cover this five, I do need to cover everything below it, even though there's a gap between those spots. So actually, I'd love to get to this four to surround the horse. I need to get to the four. Is that going to be possible this turn? Probably not, because I'm, I'm going to just put this here now. I mean, the other option is to not get this every turn and to get the horse every turn first, which might be more valuable. So if I do this like this, it's going to get me an extra coin. I know I can't do that yet, but I do have this blue thing here which could cover these three and this blue thing here which will cover these four and now i do have that income so now i'm getting five coins a turn from this new island that i just discovered i'm already collecting money from them let's see now i do have three more but again i can't cover all those below and to the left so let's see if i can get i got one two three to get one income here well, I've got these, but I don't have any coins left. So remember, I could put uh, ore on the board, which at some point I'll probably want to. But since I can't totally fill it in at this point, I'm not going to worry about it. All right. So let's go over to the animal breeding. All right. Don't pay no attention to the dead animals. Let's pay attention to the new baby animals. Yay, new baby animals. All right. So we did some animal breeding. Then we do our feast. And I'm gonna use my new horse to feed, no, I'm just kidding, I'm not using my new horse to feed my people. Not gonna happen. But this nice salted thing over here looks tasty. Uh, you know what, I'm not gonna do that though. I'm gonna use just this little piece here because I get a new one every turn. And then I will use this to cover the end here. All right. So that is feeding my people some nice cabbage, some mead, and some grain uh, for the people. And they are happily fed. Done. All right. Um, now we are done with our feast. We are going to move down to getting our income. Okay. So I haven't surrounded anything else yet, but I definitely want to get a horse income every turn. That seems way too good. Oh, I didn't get my income income. So that's three money plus five money is eight total money. Uh, so that's two, four, six, eight money. And now I can use the money to fill in some of these holes. Well, I can use this to fill in here. Well, again, 
not worried about this income right now. I'm really worried about surrounding this stuff. So I'd love to get the horse surrounded so we can do that to get a horse every round. And then can I surround this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need seven more things. One, two, or two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. So yes, I can. Let's start doing it. And again, I can trade these in for smaller ones at any point, but don't really need to, so I'm not going to. We'll just surround this. So we're going to get a horse every round and you silverware every round. And remember, that combo is great with that occupation card we already got out. Uh, we'll use an ore for this one. We'll save the money in case we need it. And in fact, I'm going to use two ore. I know ore is useful as well for pillaging and stuff, but I'm not quite there yet. I'm not ready to pillage. I'm still staying farming. I'm the farming Vikings uh, at this point of the game. All right, so I'm gonna get a fork and I'm gonna get a horse as new income every turn. So let's just paste this down here. And where are the forks? Utensils right here. And remember again, because of my occupation at any point for the tradesman, I could trade those in for an upgraded good. That's why I was really, you know, bent on getting that uh, this board up and running this turn. Um, now, I know you're saying, well, wait, these two spots are open. That's fine. I need to fill them in before I can fill this in. But if I fill in the thing behind it, below it, I, that doesn't need to be filled in. So everything I've done, as far as I know, is legal. But now I'm getting pretty decent income. Do I still not have stone income over here? My goodness. Can I get that? No, I sure can't. Can't get the stone. Can I get this one? Nope. Can't get that one either. All right. I am just not doing great on my main board but that's all right because i've got another island that's up and running and hey i can even start getting cabbage if i can fill in down here and you notice this is negative two points over here so this island's gonna be worth 15 at the end of the game but it's got negative 26 points on it from the beginning of the game um and it tells you right here again you fill in this island just like every other island all right so yeah i mean the graphic design for me is one of the better things about the game Alrighty, let's get to where we're doing, updating our mountains. Not doing a whole lot with the mountains anyway. Let's add a new mountain tile, done. All right, so the next step is taking our workers off. Then we add a uh, new Viking to our supply. And then we get our harvest. So let's focus on those three things. We do that by hitting the start of round button. It also draws us our new weapon, which of course is a sword. So they're, they're telling us, Go pillaging, young young friend. Um, oh, I never got my income from the end of the round. I set it up, and I never gave it to myself. So there you go. Lots of new income options here um, for stuff surrounded. Do 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 do. Um, yep. All right. So that's all right. So for this round, we don't get a harvest. We flip island C, and we add money to the other islands. So island C gets flipped, so all this money goes away. So we'll put some here. We'll put some here. And I bought this island, even though there were no coins above it. Uh, so when you get an island, some, you would also get whatever coins come with it as well. So this would be a great round to get this island if we want to get it at all. I mean, I feel like I'm actually doing pretty decently. So maybe I do go for another island. Um, hmm. And this one gives money income every turn too, which is kind of nice. And or income, which is good for the pillaging strategy. So maybe <laughs> I turned into pillagers with two rounds left in the game. Um, this is gonna be my last opportunity to get this island and it does come with six money. So you know what? Doing it, doing it. We're getting uh, Islay. Oh, I blocked it. I cannot. I cannot, no! Oh, is that Iceland? It says Islay. That's interesting. Oh, Islay, there it is. No, I blocked it up so I can't get that. Uh, so for three, I could get this one, but this doesn't seem great. I guess it gets you a boat every turn. Um, and it's not too hard to cover up the bad stuff and you can get a green thing every turn. Is this another income? Oh, you could get a green. Oh, hold on. What is that? You can get a green small house every turn. You can get a green shed every turn for free. 
Uh, but you do need a, uh, a different type of ship than I have right now. Interesting. You can get a boat every turn, a whaling boat every turn, and a hut every turn, and a green thing every turn on this one. That's pretty good. What can you get on this? Oh, you get the antlers thing. I like that. Uh, and there's a chance for income as well, and green stuff. Hmm. And this one uses any boat and one worker. All right. Maybe I get that island. Although, again, I'm starting to overstretch my britches here. But you know what? We're, we're going after new lands here. So we're going to take our boat and take this. We get the four money along with it. And this island board. And we got another board to fill in. <laughs> so there's that. All right. Oh, this horsey can join the other horsies over here. All right. Uh, and I'd love to get this shed at some point too. So maybe I got the wood to do it. Let's go ahead and do that. So my first action was going exploring to get new islands. My next one is I'm going to do this, spend one wood to get a shed. So I'm going to get my personal shed. The other option is to get this shed, which is worth negative or worth eight points, but negative for all these. But if you have extra wood or stone at the end of the game, they're not worth victory points, but you can put them on the shed to get rid of the negatives to make this eight stand up more. Um, and the nice part again about these two boards here is that they uh, can be filled in with orange and red stuff. So if you got way too much food, uh, which is not a problem for me right now, but if you have rounds where you do have way too much food, uh, those are other options. Ooh, I got this over here. Did I just get this? Oh yeah, I just got this at the end of the round as part of my income. So at any point I could trade it in for one of these. I'll see which of these shapes I want more, so I'm going to try to keep it here to remind myself. But what it'll probably do is make me forget all about it anyway, that I even have it. Hopefully not. All right, I'm going to put this horse here, even though I technically can't yet because I need to cover up this zero money spot over here. I can just do that with one coin, though. Unfortunately, I'm an idiot and only got two coin things here, but I will grab a coin and get another coin. All right. Oh, actually, I could have used an ore as well, but... We'll see, there's other uses for ore. I'm gonna start using coins. So now I get one of these um, things every turn and I get two money every turn. Uh, and this is worth six points at the end of the game. Now I took away a six point horse. So really just the income every turn is why I did that. So I get it for two rounds at least. Uh, so let me get one of these orange thingies here to remind myself that that will be an income of mine going forward. All right. So as you can see, the game's pretty straightforward, but there's lots and lots and lots and lots of choices. Um, and one thing I didn't explain yet is you could buy these boats at any point for their costs. So three, five, and eight. It's the only thing you can do in the game without taking an action. So I got five money here. I could just buy a whaling boat right now and go whaling if I wanted, which might not be the worst idea in the world. Um... So what do I need for whaling spears? It is the worst idea in the world because I don't have spears. I have swords, so it's really telling me it wants me to go pillaging. I do also have wood left. So I could, for eight money, buy one of these long ships, which helps me uh, go out and plunder. But instead, I'm going to just build it. So for three, I also, remember, get to draw a card. I could do either of these. I could either buy a long house or I could buy a long ship. Ooh, for four, I could do both if I had stone. I need one more stone, but I don't have any cards to play. So actually I want to draw cards. Maybe I do this later and build like a long ship and long, we'll see. All right, so I'm gonna do this now. So for two wood, and again, I get this card here. For two wood, I'm gonna get this uh, long ship over here, which again is worth eight victory points at the end of the game, in addition to uh, being able to help me pillage. Now, if you notice with these ships, they have spots. This has a spot for three ore. I'm going to put an ore here, and it's basically a permanent bonus for every single time I take uh, this raiding or pillaging action. Now, the raiding one you can't use the ore for, but this one you can. And in fact, are there cubes here? Maybe I get two more ore. So maybe I do that. That's a nice, easy action to take. Uh, I got this card. So let's see what this is. A merchant. Uh... So what this says is if you, whenever you take the three or four upgrade spots, so normally this allows you to upgrade three different goods. This allows you to upgrade four. This tells me when I do it, 
I get to upgrade one of those goods twice instead of once. And that's every time I take one of those actions, which is pretty good. That means I can go right from red to blue uh, or right from orange to green as far as um, goods. That's pretty stinking good. Uh, but let's go ahead and go pillaging first. Oh, well, no, we can get two things or we can get three which will allow us to get two coins also. Now it is two workers, but that's all right because it gives us two weapons as well. So we're back to bows and snares, which again is encouraging us to do this or maybe elk hunting, but uh, this is bows and snares are kind of up in this area over here. Or actually when we do theft, we can use those as well. But for pillaging, we cannot. Uh, oh, well, let me get this stuff off the mountain. Don't forget that. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so we're gonna load up our ship. Full of ore. I don't know why ore helps you pillage, but we're going with it. We're going with it. A ship full of ore helps you pillage. Maybe for cannons? I don't know. Uh, so, Andre says you need to fill one more spot with a coin on the horse sheet. Where is the horse sheet? One more spot with a coin on the horse sheet. Is there something I'm missing down here? No. This is surrounded here. This is surrounded here. I think I'm good, Andre. Let me know uh, where you think I'm missing a spot. Because I'm not seeing it. Because again, to get this coin, I just have to block this one. To block this one, everything below it's got to be done. I think I'm okay. Um because I use ore for these spots, coins for these spots. I think I'm okay there. Uh, Snow says, it's interesting because there are tons of options for actions, yet they're similar sort of. It's a curious game. Yeah, they are. I mean, really, it's a polyomino game. I mean, yes, there's worker placement and you're fighting for spots, but it seems like there's enough spots and enough stuff to do that there's always options. Like with these sheep, what I should really be doing every turn is getting this, an, this huge orange thing, and two or three green squares every turn is pretty good like return for three workers um i should be doing that but i haven't really done i should do it at some point at least anyway but i only have three workers left uh, and i think i want to get this down this turn but anyway let's talk about wait i didn't pay for my rating or pillaging yet oh i just did that i grabbed my two items so yeah i'm gonna pillage this turn so for pillaging, you roll a d12. Instead, you can add stone and um, swords for it. So let's go ahead and do that. Do, 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 do. Sorry, taking care of something real quick. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to go to subscriber only chat from now on. I'm sorry if that offends people, but I, I just can't keep in the middle of the stream deleting stuff. Um, so, but subscriber only, you subscribe, you can unsubscribe at the end of the stream if you just want to chat in. I still think it's worth it. I think that's going to be the best answer for everybody. So pillaging here, I could add stones and swords to it and I roll a d12. Again, you always get to roll three times, picking which one you want. One, that is not going to be the one I take. Eight, huh. Eight's pretty high. Not really as high as I want, but it's kind of high. Huh. Eight with three swords and a stone. That's four more. I could get up to 12. I love this bow. This is pretty good too for, let's see where I need to fill in. All right, I'm trying to fill in like a bunch of, like a thick block here, which would be 15 from this would be nice. 11 from this, but these are typically a little bit better. Wait, are these two literally the same size? No, this one's a little bit longer for one more point. It's actually an extra row. This one's decent also for early. Actually, this one is too. Um, all right, so I'm at eight. Let me just go to... Is this... So this is bigger by one, but I could just craft this for one or also. Oh, no, no, it's not nine or less. Um, huh. Eight. Let's go nine... 10, 11, I'll just do 11 and do this. 
because again I've got a new island I'm gonna start trying to fill in here now I can't fill these spots in technically yet but I need these three and these four to finish filling it in but I'm just kind of in my mind laying out what I think needs to be filled in oh man all right, I got one worker left, so I'm gonna need to find a way to fill in these spots. I guess I've got coins if I really need it. Uh, so let's go ahead and do our theft action here. So again, our theft action, we just need a boat and we're gonna get rid of swords, bows. So I really only have two to do that. Oh man, I wanted to play this card too. Well, didn't happen this turn, maybe next turn. Uh, actually, instead of getting rid of one of those swords, I'll get rid of a stone. Um, because I can't use stone for here. Just those cards. All right, so let's roll the orange and see where we're at. So that's four, I'm gonna re-roll it. Four. I mean your personal. Oh yes, you are correct. On my personal board, I do need one more to fill in this space. Good call. You are absolutely right. So one more coin it is. Let's do that. Thankfully, I have not collected any income from that yet, so I haven't cheated yet, but thank you. You are absolutely right, Andre. Um, good catch. And as you can see, there's sometimes it's easier to miss. Oh, did I add in these three to my dice roll? So I should have had 11 originally on my dice roll. Hold on. And then I discarded three points. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, I forgot to add my three or when I did my personal, my plundering over here. Personal plundering, yes. So I might get this crown because this crown comes with victory points. Let's see if I can. So I had 11 originally. So let's draw these two sword cards back into my hand and get my stone back. Because I totally spaced. Because when you take this space, do, 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 which space is it? This pillaging space, you get to use the ore. Here it says you can't use the ore, but here it does. So I rolled this eight here and I get three more. So I'm automatically at 11. So I can get, I got three swords, 12, 13, 14, 15. I can get up to 15, which is not enough for this. But I'm gonna get this instead. So this cost me 12, so I will literally have to get rid of one thing. I'm gonna get rid of one stone. And again, I'm gonna put this here, even though legally I cannot yet um, because I need to fill in this spot and this spot. But illegally, I'm doing it. All right, so that cost me one thing and I will, I'm not gonna pay with the stone, I'll just pay with the sword. All right, so we're in the same spot again. So here, uh, I am doing theft. This is my second roll, I rolled a four. So four, and I can use bows and swords. So I can get up to eight total, which will get me something down here. It'll get me this one and this, oh, this one's not bad, I like this one. Or it'll get me, up to this one over here. I'm, you know what? I'm gonna re. If I re-roll and get less, though, I'm really gonna be mad at myself. But I'm doing it. Re-rolling. Two. Oh! At that point, is it worth just taking the stuff back? I mean, a sword, a bow, and a spear is pretty good, and it'll let me do more in the future. Yeah, I'm gonna just get that. So there's a sword. There's a bow, oops, and there's a spear. All right, I'm just taking these things and calling it good day. That's a shame, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, and preparing yourself for the next turn is never the worst thing in the world. I mean, the best I could have gotten for six is this just little two thing, and I, don't, I just don't think that's enough right now. All right, but I'm gonna trade this in. Uh, I'm gonna trade it in because I wanna cover this area here, I'm gonna trade it in for a square. So I'll trade it in for a blue square. So I will get rid of this and trade it in for this. And we'll go ahead and put this over here. Because I need this to fill in my income spots over here. And then this, I really need to keep one coin on hand over here. Oh, I could just copy from my board. I don't know why I'm not doing that. I'm gonna leave a coin over here though to copy for later. All right, we got this spot. We got this spot and actually we've covered up to this row. So I got to do this over here as well. Uh, so I need another two coins for that. Which 
isn't great. It's not awful, but it's not exactly what I was hoping for for this like amazing turn here. Um, I'm not really covering any more income in any of these spots. Uh, two coins isn't going to be enough to cover there. So yeah, keep getting new islands. I don't know that that's the smartest thing in the world, but I would love to surround this this turn. So if I can get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to need nine to fully surround this. Oh no, more than that. Nine. Well, we'll see if I can do it. Because um, again, to cover this three, I need to cover this whole row too. If I do that, I may as well. Oh, but I don't need to cover up here. Uh, that's the good news. Yeah, see, these are all kind of interconnected. Like once you start covering here, you kind of want to do the whole thing. So we'll see if I can do it or not. Um, but I definitely need to cover this three um, to get this surrounded. Uh, and then these two here. And then I want to cover these two. All right, we got it. We got it, Peter. All right. So uh, that is the end of this round. So two more rounds to go in the game. And let's see where we are at for the round marker. I skipped a lot of stuff here. But let's get our money income. I don't think I can cover anything else. Uh, so I get three income from this board. I get six income from this board. So that's, or no, five, I'm sorry. Three plus five is eight plus three more would be 11 plus two, 12, 13. So I'm getting 13 coins. So let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 coins. Not too shabby, that's for sure. Not, not sad about that at all. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna be able to cover up quite a bit of stuff on this other board, again, to surround these things to get me even more stuff income. Now let's see if on any of these other boards there's something I'm really dying to get. This I'm not dying to get. I'd much rather, since this these are kind of interconnected, I think I'd rather get all three of these on this board. Oh, I'd love to get this ore too. I love ore. As you can see, you can put ore on chips and you can put them on your boards, which is one of the nice parts because I need ore to fill in some of these spots over here. All right, so let's uh, see what we can do, but we've got our income. Now, animal breeding time. Yay, new horses and new sheep. Uh, so those are pregnant. Let's go to the feast. We'll start with this big one, and then we'll do this little one. And then we'll do this little one. And then we'll do this one. And I don't need to spend any money to feed my people. We've done so with actual food, which is good. All right. So all this stuff goes away, but ink, and they are fed. So there is the feast phase. Now let's go to bonuses, where I'm gonna try to use all my money to buy up all this land. So let's start down here, because in order to cover this three, I need to cover down here. So we got that, we got this. I'm gonna keep trying to go around it, this blue thing, because I'd love to get these blue antlers every round. We got that. Oh, in order to do the, that other three, I had to do this. So that has to be done. Now I've got this to go here. All right. So let's see. I am down to, I'm down to five coins. I think I can do all of it, actually. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so what's more important to me? Let's see what this meat looks like. That's a pretty big one, which I can pretty easily upgrade. Um, or I get this dinky little green barrel. So I think <laughs> just by the words that came out of my mouth, you could tell I'm going to go ahead and get this meat. Oh, I actually need this one too. So I actually need all five for this. Um, oh, and I need to cover this for this anyway. So yes. So there's that. And then I need all five of these surrounded. Or I could get an ore every turn, but I don't think that's as valuable as what I'm doing here. All right. So let's look at new stuff I have surrounded just on this turn are going to be this meat and these horns. I think that is it. All right. So horns, that'll be part of my income. And big slab of meat, that is also part of my income. All right. So as you can see, the income's getting better and better as the game's going along. And that's the thing about this game. It is definitely a game of acceleration. So I'm gonna take all this stuff and get it for my very own. 
with the Vikings doing their plundering, raising horses, raising sheep. Got that going for me. Uh, <laughs> oh, don't forget that horn over there. Oh, and I got a wood over here. Oh my gosh, this is a mess. Uh, ah. Uh, yeah. Yep. So, uh, Dr. Dan says, afternoon gaming. Love it. Missed the notification. Sorry, Dr. Dan. Uh, but this is a Feast for Odin if you haven't played it. It is really a polyomino laying game, as I've said many times. Uh, there is some worker placement to determine what polyominoes you get and what stuff you can do. But it's really all about placing the polyominoes on your board. Um, that's kind of the gist of most of what you're trying to do. All right. So that is all of that done. I'd love to play this merchant card because I love double upgrades, like upgrading stuff at this point of the game gets real powerful. But I am done with getting my income. Let's update the mountains, badink, and add a new mountain in. Then we remove our workers, add our workers. So we're gonna go right to the harvest, uh, clicking this button. We are gonna also draw our card, which is a couple steps down, but let's go ahead and do the harvest. Let's look at our board to see what we're doing for this round. Where is my board? <laughs> There's so much stuff now. All right, so this board. So I do get one to four harvest and the last island is going to flip D. You'll notice we don't do any more flipping or adding money after this. So last round, D gets flipped, money gets added, and uh, and I do harvest one through four. So here's harvest one through four. But dink We'll put that over here. Oh my gosh. On top of my stuff. So much stuff. That's the thing. This game accelerates in such a satisfying way. Even talking to Mike, who, as you guys know, is not much of a Euro gamer, not much of a, um, you know, typically this wouldn't be in his wheelhouse, but he even loves how satisfying it is to uh, for these things to build up. And yes, Dr. Dan, it is a holiday here in the U.S. That's why I have the ability to um, play today. Uh, it's Martin Luther King Day, celebrating the life of one of the great Americans, Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King, who believed in peace and equality for all, and his teachings live on today. Um, so that's why we get to celebrate, and uh, and really today's a day just to reflect on him and you know the things that he's brought us. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and do to do, do. Where am I? I am lost. All right, I get to flip D, and then this one gets a coin. Or two coins. All right. So I don't think I'm getting any more islands. I have two islands in addition to my starting one and a barn. So, or my personal shed, I guess it's called. Um, yeah, I got enough stuff. Two more rounds of the game to go. I'm going to see what I can do for, I'm going to try to get some of my ships up here. Maybe I go pillaging one more time and then get that ship up there. I can't even pillage. So that will be last round. I'll try to get that ship up. So maybe I try to get my NAR up this round. Uh... Well, if I do it this round, then I can't do it again next round, right? So I'm just gonna save that for next round. Although it doesn't help me on the feast, it does give me victory points. So that's the question. Do I need the help on the feast? I mean, I got a lot of food here, right? So maybe I don't, but eh, maybe I do. Maybe I get it up there. I got the gnar. Oh, you know what I can do? Even better, I can't build the ship. Gosh darn it. I was gonna say I could build the ship, do the stuff with the stuff, but I can't. Uh, let's do this action. We haven't seen this one yet. So this is buying uh, items from the market. So for three workers, I also get to draw a card. Uh, so locksmith, per one of these chests that you receive from your supply, you can pay a coin to also get a small barrel. I don't care about that, but the one victory point's not going to make me sad uh, at the end of the game. All right. So I get to, because I have this ship, I get to buy two things with coins. Well, I don't have coins. What am I thinking? I literally don't have coins. Now there are some free ones. So for example, this one is free. Are there any other free ones on the board that I can buy for zero coins? For one coin, I could buy these, that one's two. So yeah, with my coin, all I could get was this for free. So I'm gonna return last worker. Um, return last worker and return last worker. All right, I'm not doing that as my first action, but maybe, just maybe I get some coins to work on that. Now, how do I get coins, you may ask? Oh, I lose this locksmith as well, which does not make me sad, not even a little bit. 
I guess I should technically put it on top, but I'm shuffling it in. I don't want to know like that I don't want to go there and get that. Uh, so for three coins, I could buy these things. All right, this gives me two coins, and I do have the horse, so I could get all of this stuff. So that would get me two coins. Of course, I could turn these things into a good. Do I have those? Nope, sure don't. Uh, oh, I got lots of bows and swords. All right, bows. Let's go big game hunting over here. Or just game hunting to get this. And we'll go from there. All right, so for one worker, I'm going to do this. Uh, bows and wood to pay for it. Let's roll it. Uh, that's one. So one bow. <laughs> all of the bows I needed to get rid of. Uh, all right. So I use my one bow. So I get a three green and a six meats. Do, 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 do. And a one pelt here. And then I could trade this in. All right. So we got some otherwise. Uh, Andre says, thanks to the Norwegian expansion, Feast for Odin is my number four game of all time. It's, I'll, I'll be honest, it's up there for me and it, and it's just getting higher. Uh, every time I play it, I realize how good of a game this is. Uh, all right. I really want to get this card out of my hand. So I need a three action to play that card. Now, one of my favorite actions earlier used to be this play one to four action. Uh, it is a three. So you get to draw a card and then play four cards from your hand. This one lets you draw two and play one and get a coin. This one makes you pay to do stuff. I'd like to do a three action. Ooh, do I have all these things? Do I have two wood? I do. I got an o uh, stone and an ore. What is this? I've never taken this action, I don't think. Ooh, I like this. That's a bunch of like little stuff. So let me go ahead and pay it and it lets me draw one. So two wood, a stone and an ore, which is exactly what I have get rid of that stuff and we get stuff that is covered uh so take a silver a tools a rune stone and a chest a silver a tools a rune stone and a chest so this one's a chest this is a tools so i need a rune stone and a silver i think this is a rune stone so when you highlight over it it tells you what it's called too and uh silver so i got a money and I got all this stuff, which is good. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, so, so when you succeed at whaling, uh, using exactly one, then you get another one back. But again, this is a three victory point thing. So maybe it is time. How many workers do I got left? Four to draw and play. You know what? I'm doing it. So I'm doing this. So this actually only costs three. So I get to draw a card, which I do, and I'm gonna play all three of these cards because I could play up to four cards. This one I'm gonna use for the action, hopefully. This one is three victory points, and this one I just got is three victory points. Before the feast, um, with at least one or two in your supply. So if you have these blue bowls in your supply, you get one or two coins based on how many. So before you feast, if you have blue things in your supply, but that means they're not on your board, you get one or two coins. Nah, it's kind of garbage. That's why it's worth three points. Uh, succeed in whaling with exactly one. I mean, that's hard to exactly predict that you're going to need one. So again, it's not great. And it just returns your one, basically. This one is great, though. When you do an upgrade, you get to do an, a double upgrade on one of your goods. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to see if I can like combo it here because I'd love to do the unequal greens change to blues again. So I think I have three actions left. Oh, but that requires two coins, doesn't it? And I don't have two coins and I'm not going to have two coins. So I'll save that for the last turn. But I do want to upgrade some stuff. So either upgrade three or four things here. Uh, and like I'd like to do one this turn and one next turn. I have four workers left. So for three workers, I could do this which means I could have actually played a fourth card there had I done it in the opposite order. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to draw this card and just play it. Whatever it is, doesn't matter. Uh, I, would, I should have done it in the opposite order, so I could have played this. So this says, uh, so place a rune stone in a house, either of these two houses, then you get this as income from doing that. That might be a possibility because um, I definitely have a runestone here and I could get a house pretty easily. All right, but I have one worker left. So again, I'm going to pretend I did those in the opposite order. So for this, I get to upgrade four things. Oh, no, no, no. I couldn't do it in the opposite order because I needed this to be played to get the double upgrade. So never mind. This is just in my hand. It's fine. 
Uh, everything is back to the way it was. <laughs> All right, so I need to upgrade four things that because I would not have gotten this double upgrade had I not done it. So I'm gonna double up, uh, so I get to upgrade four things and one of them twice. So I'm gonna upgrade this one. I'm gonna upgrade this two. I'm gonna upgrade this three. And I'm gonna upgrade this for my fourth. And then I'm gonna upgrade this one again for my fifth action. So there you go. So I do have one of those. So I guess this garbage card down here, I got. I could get one coin if I decide not to put it on my board, which actually, now the more I think about it, I might not. Cause if it's only to cover up, I mean, you need them at the end of the game anyway to cover up these spots over here, which are a bunch of negative points, but don't really do you a lot if you're not really working on getting the income from this. So maybe I won't put it in. If I don't need it this turn, I won't put it in. There you go. I'm flexible with my thinking. <laughs> uh, all right, so the nice, oh, I do need to fill these two in to get this income filled if I ever wanna do that. Um, I mean, it's one more income. It's gonna cost me three, might not be worth it. In fact, it doesn't help me fill in anything else. So I probably won't fill that in because it's not negative points. I'd rather fill in these things, which all give me negative points. Uh, these are negative points. So for that board, that's all I'm gonna focus on. For this board, I definitely want these four to get the or every turn. Um, and then, you know, again, these are negative points. Obviously, I want the negative two covered there. And then I'll probably focus on my main board after that. All right, and for this board, oh, I do wanna surround this if I can this turn. Okay, so all things that go through your mind. Uh, Andre says, it's so great from one to three players. Wouldn't play with four because it would take too long. I don't disagree with that. And there is a lot of stuff you can do when it's not your turn. Like I could be putting all this stuff on my board now, right? A lot of times I'll start filling out the feast. Okay, I know I wanna do this. I know I wanna do this. The reason I'm not doing it when it's not my turn here is because it's always my turn. Uh, <laughs> so that is not really an option, um, but you know, I could fill in the feast while I'm waiting for other people to go. I could fill in my board with this stuff while other people are going. So there are things to do, although I agree uh, the downtime gets more with more. I think three is my ideal player count, um, but the board scale as well, which is kind of nice. All right. Oh, I'm done all this stuff. I'm onto my actions. All right. So I've done those actions. I think I have one worker left. Am I right? All right. So I probably want to do one of these right actions. Can't do theft for an ore, which I don't have anymore, right? Okay, so let's not even think about that. Could do this. I mean, this elk hunt is always a good one and I still got tons of stuff for hunting. So that's what we're doing. So snares, spears, and bows. We will go on an elk hunt and we will get a six. We will not take that. Our second roll is a four. Snares, spears, and bows, you know what? Yeah, it's fine. I don't wanna, I don't wanna roll something I can't get this is the last time I'm going to get an opportunity at that action. I got an extra bow, but it's fine. Uh, wait a minute. Do, 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 Spears. Okay. Yep. So for doing this action, which I probably want to do next turn, um, I won't need it. All right. So draw a weapon card, random weapon card. I got another spear. So that's good. The bow is really the only thing I, oh no, I can use bows for this. Uh, so I can literally use all this for theft next turn, which is probably what I'll do unless I need any of it for uh, pillaging. All right, so I get the uh, horns as well. Do, 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 do. All right. So there we go. Time to start filling our board up. Uh, so we're done with all these actions. Pass first player. Again, whoever had the last action in the round would get that in a multiplayer game. Now we're going to start collecting income. All right, I've decided I am not going to cover in this income space. It's not worth it for me to cover in one, two, three, four blank spaces to get one money. Uh, it, it's just not, because one money covers one space. It's one victory point, and I'm wasting four victory points to do that. Unless I just have a lot of extra blue stuff. Oh, well, I'm doing this anyway. So it's actually only two extra spots. Might be worthwhile now that I think about it. All right, let's surround this first and we'll go from there. All right, so to surround this, I will use this. And then I need a three over here. Oh, and I can trade in one of this for one of those two. Don't forget to do that. 
All right, so that's gonna get me a cabbage every turn. Here's a cabbage, we'll move that to my income, and actually I'm just gonna move this over in a second. Uh, all right, so I could do that. So actually, I'm gonna to wanna to cover this one and two anyway. So let's go ahead and do that now. Oh, so I'll have to actually spend covering three spots though. I don't know that I wanna, I, I still don't know that I wanna do that. Yeah, it's three extra money to get one. Don't think it's worth it. Yes, I'm gonna cover in these things, but that is not gonna help me get extra income. Nothing on this board will help me get extra income. Yes, I'll be able to get an ore in a minute, but that's not what I'm worried about right now. I'm looking at income money-wise. So actually, I didn't even need to do that right now. So let's focus on this board. This is where I'm gonna get my biggest gains for income. Uh, unfortunately, can't fit this one in any of those spots. Huh. All right. So this I can turn into a four. So let's do that. So I'm gonna trade this in and get a four length one and put that down here. Gosh, I had the stone income. I didn't get the entire game either. Then this chest will fill in nicely here. So really I'm trying to fill in all of this stuff at this point. All right, then God, this becomes the weirdest thing ever. All right, well this, at least I'll fill into the five if I can do this. I'd like to get this to get this blue rune every turn, but this will at least get me to the five and I might be able to get to the six. Oh man, I just don't have a lot of coins and stuff, so none of this is actually gonna work. Uh, wow, I really hurt myself with how I laid this board out. Man, I am not gonna be able to get that one more income because I don't have two coins or anything else. This is really, I really messed myself up here with this. Um, yeah, so again, the polyomino game matters for sure. Pay attention to it. <laughs> and I keep spending my coins. Oh, I got this, I got this. Well, yeah, but again, I can't cover, I can't cover this in this space. I really back myself in a corner because I don't have money and I don't have ore. Huh, and you can't just pull ore off of your ships. So yeah, I think I'm in trouble. Ryan says hello again. Hello, Ryan. Welcome, welcome. All right, yeah, I have backed myself in a corner here. I got one coin, but I got two spots that I really need that one coin for, which means I'm not gonna be able to surround this rune stone either. Oh, all right, so lesson learned. Save coins and put them in those spots as soon as you can, or put ore in like I didn't need Ah, yeah, all right, mistakes were made. Mistakes were made, people, terrible. All right, so let's collect our income because that's the part of the phase we're on. Uh, we're only gonna get three for this board still. We're only getting five, so that's a total of eight. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I just filled in with these here, none of them would help. So five and three is eight, and another four over here, so that's 12 and another two is 14. So 14 income for this turn. So two, four, six, eight, 10, two, four. Sadly, um, and now I can surround stuff. So let's go ahead and focus on surrounding things. I'm gonna trade this two in for two ones. I'm gonna fill these in before I forget. Before it kills me again. Uh, we'll put this here, which means I just got to fill in this with a one and nope, I'm good. Don't need to fill anything else in. So this blue is surrounded. I'm going to save my money because as we've seen better to save it than put it on the board for no good reason. I'm not collecting income now, but I am going to get a blue rune stone. Uh, every round, which there is literally one round left in the game. So all of the one round that is left in the game. Uh, I got the cabbage on this one surrounded. Oh, I want to get the ore surrounded on this. Really money is going to be my only option for that as well. So let's do that. Where is it? Ah, here it is. So there's that. And well, that's not true. I can use this. Boom. Done. So now I just need a little two blue there, that's fine. So I can get that uh, or every turn as well. 
which as we've seen, or is good because again, it fills in those gaps. Uh, now, I do have this. So before the feast, if you have one or two, get one or two coins. I do have one, so I get one coin. Because that's before the feast, which is what we're about to go into next. Well, breeding animals is first. So this is a pregnant cow and a pregnant, or a pregnant horse and a pregnant sheep. We are making babies of both. Nice, very nice. And then we are going to do, 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 do. We got the one income from this because it is before the feast now. We're about to do the feast. And that looks like a pretty tasty feast to me. They are all filled in, so that works out. Get rid of those and people are fed and happy. All right, so we are done with our feast. We are now getting our income for surrounded stuff, which I surrounded all the stuff. Hopefully I put it here as I surrounded it. I got a cabbage there. I know I got a cabbage recently. Got elk horns, which I got there. Uh, I got the ore, which I just got. So I should be getting two ore. Yep, that all looks right. I'm gonna take that as being right and we'll go ahead and put this over here. Now at the end of the game, you do not get this bonus again. So surrounding stuff at the end of the game doesn't matter. We are gonna get animal breeding again though. So that'll be good to do, uh, or good to know going in. So we remove goods going into the last one. We're adding our last mountain. Obviously yeah, we haven't been doing that. Remove our Vikings from the board. We are going to get new Vikings and we are gonna harvest. We don't harvest in the last round. There are no more things to flip in the last round. So we can see that do to do, do on our main board because there's nothing under this last round. So not a, no upkeep in this last round. So we just start the round where we've done all of that. No flipping islands. We did get our weapon card. What did we get? We got a spear. All right. So again, leaning toward this theft action as our last action of the game. So I'm going to want to pillage before then though. I'm really trying to get this crown here. I got a fully loaded up long ship and I am hoping to use it to do some pillaging. So let's go ahead and do that for two, roll the d12. Uh, and I'm gonna remember to add three to it this time. So it's a six, not gonna keep that. Oh, come on, 12, four, not gonna keep that. And come on. All right, eight, so that's 11. And for pillaging, we can add stone or swords. 12, 13, 14, can't get there still. Um. So I'm just gonna stick with 11, I think, and see what I can get. Now we gotta remember, it's a weird part of the game where like the boards are pretty weird now. Um, so like things we're gonna be, ha be able to add have to fit. But I'm gonna get this for 11, good enough for me. All right, so that's one action. You know what, while I'm at it, let's raid two. Uh, <laughs> so for swords and stones again, I probably should've got some stones before I did this, but that's fine. Uh, we don't get to add our things from our ship. I think I'll stick with five. Let's see what I can get from here. For three, I can get to eight. Or for two, I can get to seven. So the only negative is I'd really, when I do this, love to get up to 16 uh, with a D8. It's going to be hard. So maybe that wasn't the smartest thing to do. Uh, I could just use it to get a sword and a stone, though. So maybe I just roll it again, and if I don't like it, I get the sword and the stone. I think that's what I do. Five again. For one, I can get this, but you know what? I'm just gonna get a sword and a stone. I think I'm okay with that. Um, so let's search these cards, and I don't have a sword in there. Of course I don't. 10 cards, still no sword probably. Nope, all right, so I search the main deck, and then I'll split, uh, shuffle it. Let's get a sword from there. Draw that into our hand and shuffle it up. All right, and let's get a stone. I just pulled the sword from the stone. Now, stone's not gonna do me much good uh, over there, but let's see if we can turn stone into something somewhere else, since we did the action. I mean, that only cost me one action to get a sword and a stone. I think I'm okay with that. Now, I definitely wanna do this double upgrade action. I might even wanna do this action here where I get to upgrade uneven greens, if I can get enough greens. So maybe I focus on getting greens uh, by the way, you could turn horses and sheep into greens as well. You could trade them for the next thing up. Uh, or for horses, it'd be over here. It'd be these uh, leather. Uh, so you can trade them up as well. So maybe I do that. That would cover a lot of spaces. So a six pointer would cover 10 spaces. All right, so I think that's what I'm doing next. I'm doing some upgrading. 
quote unquote upgrading. Uh, so let's take a three upgrade action. When I do that, remember, I get to upgrade one of those things twice. Well, we're going to start by upgrading these horses once. We're going to then upgrade the sheep once. And what's the third thing we want to upgrade? We're going to upgrade these fruit once. And then that will be the thing I upgrade a second time. So there you go. That's upgraded twice. I'm going to put this over here to keep that for later. Uh, this ore is going to be important for covering spots on my board as well as the money over here. Uh, let's look at the feast because actually I may still want to upgrade some more stuff. I am planning on getting uh, one ship up here. Uh, do to do, do probably the ship I just pillaged with because there's no more actions I can do with these long ships. I'm not getting more islands. I'm not plundering over here. Uh, for my last action, I'm not going to do this. So I'm going to do this and I only need this blue ship over here. So let's take the upgrade a ship action. That is right here. So we get to upgrade a ship. It costs money equal to the round number. As again, a reminder, the round number is right here. So that's seven. Uh, so I'm going to have to pay seven money. So two, four, six, seven to upgrade this ship. Now I lose all the ore, unfortunately. It's just gone. There are occupations that'll rescue that, but it doesn't. But now that eight pointer is worth 21 and it makes it so I let, need less food at the end of this round. So let's go ahead and put this down here. And, huh. I guess I'll put a cabbage here. And then I can either use a coin, but what's the point of using coin when I got the peas here? I'll just use those. So again, this isn't locked in officially, but just so I kind of have an idea of what I'm gonna have to pay at the end of the round, that's what I'm looking at. All right, so I got one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm trying to get to 16, so I would have to roll an eight right now. So I'd really like more weapon cards for this final pillage here. So, do I go to a spot that gives me stuff? I mean, if I don't get it, I'm still going to get something from here. Oh, I got money now. Let's do that buy stuff action that I was going to show you last time. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, where's the one that costs money? Money, money, money. Money. Ah, here it is. So, I still have that long ship. I get to draw a card because of that. How many workers am I down to, by the way? Oh, down to my final two. So, something to think about. All right, uh, so I get to buy these tiles now. I'm definitely buying the free one here. So this is zero. And again, I should be planning out my board better. Um, I am not. <laughs> so hopefully this all fits at the end of the game. I mean, I got a lot of space here, so I think I should be fine. Uh, so I get to buy something else. And again, I want to get my best value for money. Um, I only have four money left. These are extra over here. So I only have four money left. So let's see what the best value for the money. So this covers up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That covers up seven. Let's see if this bow, it's kind of a weird shape. It's not really gonna fit anywhere well on my boards. Certainly not on these little boards. I'm really just looking at the big boards now. Uh, but I took the free one and, and as you could see, when you take this action, it's one of the better actions in the game. I actually surprised I haven't done it before now. Uh, you can get two things from there. So I've got one already. Let's see what the second one's gonna be. Two money for this isn't bad. Six for this, eh. Two for this is pretty good. I mean, it's better, right? It's just the same thing, but covers up more. Three for this, that covers up even more. Although, does it literally just cover up the one extra space? Yes, yeah, so I don't need that. Yeah, so I'm going to pay three for this. Uh, no, I don't need to pay for three for this. I'm going to pay two for this. Oh, four for this. Huh. Six, five. Yeah, I'm just going to pay two money and get this one. I think this is better. All right. So for two money, total, I got this for free. This costs two. Um, and so more stuff for me to do. Oh, I got this wood here too. So I got an extra wooden stone. Uh, let's see if I can use it on any of these one point actions and then I could pillage for my last action. Or actually, maybe smarter yet, I play one of these cards. 
So this breeder would immediately make a cow pregnant, which I don't have, and this would be every time I do this. So again, it's just one point for playing a card. I don't know that that's worth it. Let's see, I mean, this is better, right? This gets me a coin and uh, a two space. So that covers three negative spots for one stone. So let's do that. All right, so get rid of the stone, which is worth nothing at the end. And I get this little two thing and I get a coin, which seems to make more sense, right? Because then I get to cover more stuff up. All right, so I'm done with all that. Those minus one spaces are scary. So many of them still says snow. Yes. Uh, well, it's the last round of the game. There are a lot of negative one spaces, but I have a lot of stuff to cover them. So hopefully, hopefully I was smart enough to do something right. All right. We're going to thief the biggest thing we can. All right. So here we just roll a D8 and I can literally use all the cards in my hand, which I believe are eight points we said. So I'm just going to get the biggest thing. I want an eight. 14 right now six so 14 what could i get up to and i actually could get this too this might be a situation all right so 14 is no better than 13 because there's two 13s here so i'm going to roll again and pray for an eight because a five or better is no better than an eight to me five six seven are the same i want an eight so second roll is a two not nearly as good third roll come on big nut all right not enough. All right, so I got eight cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus three is 11. So I am gonna get an 11 point something. Uh, I just gotta figure out what it is. Honestly, you guys know, I, I don't need to discard these. So um, I'm gonna get an 11 point something. Actually, I could just do this. That is not working for some reason. Anyway, yes, it bothers me. My OCD kicking in. <laughs> All right, so uh, 11 points something, 11 points something. So I lost out on a couple points here. I could have gone up to the 13s. Uh, that's 10, 9, 11, 12, 11. So I could get this, which is probably the best thing I can get at this point. But I'm going to start filling some stuff in just to make sure, especially before I trade this in. All right, I am trying to get as high an income as possible because again, we don't get stuff for surrounding things here. We're going to income phase. I'm gonna to try to get as much money as possible because the more money I have, the more stuff I get to fill in. So this cross is pretty good for this spot here. This is pretty good for here. And again, I just gotta make sure it all works by the end, right? That I've covered up whatever's below it by the end. All right, so I got a one spot here, so I need this. Uh, I don't necessarily need this coin, so let's see if we can do this. I'd love to cover up to the 12 and get 15 income, it would be amazing. Don't think it's gonna happen, but for those people who like doing polyautomono puzzles are satisfying for, this game will be so satisfying for you. So I'd love to fill in this whole column of two here and this one space right here. Now, am I gonna be able to do it? Maybe, maybe. I'm gonna start, well, I'll start at the bottom. So there's that. There's that. Yeah, it looks like I will. Maybe, maybe. Oh, am I gonna be just a little bit short? Oh, no, 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 no. All right, so hold on. I know what I'm trading this thing in for. Not this thing. So this will go here, but I'm gonna trade this in for the four chest over there. Now, actually, the more I think about that, I have one of these on my board and I'm an idiot because I could have traded that in. Where did I put it? I put it here. Now, I mean, it perfectly fits there to be sure, but I could have traded that in for one of these and probably done some better stuff. All right. So in order to make this work, I gotta fill in this spot and this spot. Um, Do I care with what? Let's just do it with coins. Cause I don't have anything, oh, no, no, no. This is the only place that this is, or no, this can fit here. Look at that, boom. I'm glad I didn't get the thing with the tail on it for one extra coin. I wouldn't have been able to fit it in. Um, And then we'll use a coin for here. With that being said, there's zero chance I'm getting that 12 filled in. I need all these spaces filled in. That's not gonna happen. 
Um, but I do still have these things to put on my board. Now let's see, could I have gotten away with not using this? Yes, I could have, because that gets me an extra coin as a reminder. So I could do this and this, because this will still fit here at the end of the game. So who cares if I use it now, I just need to fill it in by the end of the game. But for my income phase, I'd rather remember before my feast, if I still have it, I'm gonna get a coin for it. So I'd rather not put that on my board if I can help it, and I can help it. So I decide not to put it on. So Snow says, polyomino puzzles are very much fun to do. And that's literally, to me, that's what makes this game. This puzzle's fine, but really you're doing this puzzle to do your polyomino puzzle. Like you are figuring out the best moves you can make to put the best things on your board. And there's some luck, there's some randomness with rolling dice and using weapons to get stuff like that. But I mean, you could literally choose to just do the worker placement stuff. I had sheep the whole game, I never took this action. I could have done this several times getting three of these green squares, which probably would have been smarter than some of my actions I took. Um, so yeah, so there's lots and lots of options and lots of things you can do in this game. All right, but let's calculate our income now before we start breeding. All right, so I get 12 from my main board. That's pretty good. Five more, that's 17, plus four more, 21, plus two more, 23. All right, I'm gonna take these big ones because I don't think I'll need too many change. So that's 10, 14, 18, 20, 22, 23. We'll do it that way. And yes, there are a lot of negative spaces on my board. And yes, I might need to trade this in. I'll probably need to break in up some of this stuff. Um, you know, but like this negative two is way more important than to cover than some of the other stuff. I'm gonna try to cover up all my sideboards first uh, and then cover up as much as I can on my main board. But that's my income. Uh, next, we are doing animal breeding and then the feast and then we're done. All right, animal breeding, they all become pregnant. Done. And now we are doing the feast. I've already got the feast laid out so we can just delete this stuff. Now with these extra oranges, had I gotten one of these buildings here, I could have used it. And actually this building would have been great for me. Although again, it costs wood to buy it, right? But I could have done the wood and the stone and I could have filled in some of this with you know, a little bit of my extra stuff I've got here. Don't forget to get one coin for this. I did forget that. Boom. All right, so let's start filling in the final polyomino puzzle and then we will go to the score sheet and see how well we did. All right, so I don't need to fill in this, but I'm gonna take these four and fill this in. Badink. I'm gonna take a two and fill that in. Do I have anything? Oh yeah, I got a couple twos. I definitely need to fill that in. So let's go ahead and get rid of this and get two twos instead. We'll fill that in. We'll fill this in. Now, technically at the end of the game, you don't have to fill this in. You could add up all your coins and make them positive points and then add up all your negative points on the board. I prefer not to do that. I prefer to fill in as many spots as possible. That way I'd have to do less math at the end of the game. So this board is completely filled in from negative spots. This one, again, these aren't negative spots. I need three more coins to fill this one in, which I have one, two, and three. All right, so there's that. Ah, no, no, disaster. It's fine. This whole board's filled in. We know it. You don't get income for anything else anymore. All right. It's sitting on the trash can. Oh, disaster. All right. So this whole board's filled in. This whole board's filled in. So now we're just trying to fill in as much of the main board as possible, which we will do here. Now, I won't be able to fill in those money spots, but that doesn't matter, actually, because those aren't negative spots. So that doesn't hurt you at the end of the game. All right. Now, let's get out our pencil. And you are gonna get to see me draw with, oh gosh, no, no, no. I need a much finer point pencil than that. That is way big. Can I make this smaller? Is there really no way to make it smaller? All right, well, I got that. Is there really no way to make it smaller? I really would like it smaller. 
<laughs> I got the color picked. Oh, white? No, I don't want white. I want black. Apply. Why is it white? I don't want that. Come on. Not white. Oh, that's circle. Oh, color. Hello? Like, why? I, I don't understand why it's telling me white. Well, this just isn't writing at all. What did I do? No. All right, let's go off of it, come back on it. It's like an eraser now. Why is it an eraser? What happened? I don't know. Anyway, all right. <laughs> I guess I will write this down on a piece of paper. It's not as satisfying. All right, I can, oh, 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 text. Here we go. All right, I'll just text it in. All right, ship points. Let's go with ship points first. So I have five points worth of ships. So that's five. Then emigrations. So that's these over here. I got 21 points worth of emigrations. Okay. So any ship that goes here is an emigration. I got five points here, 21 points here. All right. So then expansion boards. So that is these. I get 15 and 10. So that's 25 points worth of expansion boards. So that's 25. All right. Sheds and bonuses. So I got this shed here, ah, which is worth six points for this shed here. So sheds and bonuses, six points. Sheep and cattle. Well, which is all animals uh, now, because again, that is a expansion thing. Yeah, so this is basically all animals. So let's add it up. I get six times four, so that's 24 plus another eight is 32. Is that right? So that would be 32, yep. And then 34, 36, 37, 38, 39. I get 39 points from my animals. So I guess that's a successful animal breeding uh, Viking population. Uh, let's look at our occupations now and calculate our points from occupation. So again, just the ones you played, I got three, six, nine, ten points from my occupations. Seems good. So that's ten points here. Silver. I got no leftover silver at the end of the game. So I can put this zero here because I used it all to cover. Final income. Oh, I didn't realize you got your final income as part of your score. Is that true? Huh. I think that's only if you don't count it. Like if, well, the board says you end the game after here, so I guess you do get a final income. All right, let's count it. So I don't know if this is right. So it's 12 plus five. I mean, it makes sense that it gives you another reason to do it, but I think you're supposed to do that only if you don't do the final stuff at the end of the game. I, I never have done another income round, I don't think. So you all tell me if I'm wrong um, in the in the notes. Let's see. Well, actually, you know what? Let's look it up. We looked something else up earlier. Let's look this up because I'm, I'm now curious. Because uh, I think you don't count that. I think that's just to stop you from having to add up a bunch of stuff at the end of the game. Uh, do, 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 do. This has nothing to do with final income. Do 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 do. This explains all of how this works. Hey, um, Andre, if you're still out there and you know the answer to this, I'm pretty sure you don't get a final income. You just it's just to prevent you from having to do what I did, which is cover up spaces at the end of the game but I'm pretty sure you don't get another income on top of that. Um, the feast, phase 10, phase 11, anytime actions, placing house tiles, placing buying ships, changing silver, action spaces, production spaces. Mount Andre says concerning the final income. Yeah, so it says on the scoring sheet, it says final income. 
But I think because I already took my final income, I don't score it again, right? Um, I already took my final income because I had some negative two spaces and stuff that I wanted to score. Do I take another final income after I've covered up my spaces at the end of the game? You don't need to put your final income on the tiles. Right. So, yeah, that's to prevent you from doing it. The only reason I wanted to do it here is it covered some negative two spaces. So, yes. So, technically, I could have just added up my income and never put them on the polyomino puzzle at the end of the game. English crown, I do not have. So, that's a zero. Uh, so, my home board scoring. Um, expansion board sheds. So, this is positive subtotal and then the penalty. Uh, so, home board... Expansions, sheds. Oh, this is a subtotal from the top. Ah, and then these are all negative at the bottom. All right, so let's see. I got five plus 21. So 25 and 21, is, or I'm sorry, 25 and five is 30, plus 21 is 51, plus 39, 51 plus 39. So 51 plus nine is 60, plus 30 is... Uh, 90 and then 100 with this 10 here 106 so i got a 106 for the top board and then let's count up all our negatives and see what our score is i believe they consider 100 a winning score so it's not looking good here so that's negative three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so i am negative 14 points from my home board. So that is not looking good for me. Negative 14 from 106 is a grand total of 90, what is it, eight? Or no, 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 92 points. Grand total of 92. So I have failed miserably to get 100 points on this game. Um. So Andre says, you can just write on the score sheet. Yes, for the negative two spaces, you should. For any other spaces, not relevant. It just stops me from adding up spaces, but it does take up time to do that uh, at the end of the game too. So there's that. But um, yes, 92 is the final score. But honestly, in most of my games, Andre says, I forget this as well and just place all my silver as well. Looks better to have full boards. I agree. Uh, so yes, Snow, you said you were worried about all those negative spaces. Well, they came back to bite me. Because trying to get to 100, I got to 92. So that was a failure on my part. So you have now seen, oh, did I do boats? Yes, I did boats, five points, emigration 21. Yep, I did all of it. All right, so you have seen me fail spectacularly. So you can just do better. Uh, that was brutal, so close to 100. I mean, it's still fun. That is the one thing I will say about this game. I Oh, 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 hold on. I got one more. Eh. So I get 93 points. Uh, yes. Text. Change it. 93. Change it. Negative 13. All right. Still brutal. Still not a win. So close. Seven points away. Um, but that's, I mean, that's a feast for Odin. Honestly, the game itself, the playing of the game is what I love. So actually, let's go to final thoughts here. Do, 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 do. All right, final thoughts time, everybody. So what are my thoughts for Feast for Odin? As you could probably tell as I was playing the game, I love it. I love filling in polyomino puzzles. It's so fun for me. I love going after animal breeding. So that's part of the reason I like the expansion is because animal breeding isn't really very viable with the base game. It's just too expensive to get the animals, at least in my opinion. They don't have these very uh, high profitable animals. Uh, the horses there, they don't have the pigs, which are nice small animals and easy to get. So um, I, I don't think the animals are as viable. I certainly think you can do it, but I don't think they're as viable in the base game. So that's one of the reason I really like the expansion. I also like the expansion because I actually think it simplifies things and I love this final action of the round thing here where you um 
you know, just pick something for one or two workers and get a better action. But it's a race with other people to try to get there first. The solo mode is very interesting because you're blocking up your own spots. So kind of near the end of the game, I ended up blocking myself out of getting an island that I wanted when I wanted it. Um, I blocked myself out of, you know, playing extra cards at the end of the game to get points. So there are certain actions that you want to do and you just don't have enough actions to do everything. I was really, I got greedy at the end. I wanted that crown uh, over here. So, I mean, but I need to roll an eight on the dice to get it. So not very likely to get it, but I went for that. I, I just like, I like the push your luck elements. I like the worker placement is one of my favorite mechanisms in games. So that part is great for me too. The one negative for this game that I will give it, number one is it, it's a little bit longer, certainly. Um, I don't mind that for solo though. The thing that bothers me the most for solo is there's not a whole lot of variability from game to game. Yes, you're blocking yourself out of the actions, but all the action spaces are the same and you're blocking your own self out. Now, what varies from game to game is the weapons you get. And as you see, it made a big difference. I mean, it certainly decided what I did was based on what weapons I got and the occupations are gonna be different from game to game. But as you saw also, I didn't necessarily use the occupations all that much. I used this one when I placed it. I used this one for two coins. Never used this. I did use this every round. So, uh, and I guess the barn that you have is going to be different from game to game as well. So there are a couple things that change from game to game, but most of the actions on the board for solo are going to be the same. So I think it's the kind of game that you could come back. Now I say that. And I've almost always gotten over 100 points. Now, I may have also almost always been cheating because I don't know that I've ever removed that first round marker before on the first round, uh, which is pretty clear that you should do. Um, so, <laughs> so I don't know that I've actually played correctly. And so I'm scoring like 130, 140 points. But that might be because I literally got an entire extra round of playing the game, which makes a huge difference to the game, obviously. Um, now, I have not played this as much as most, but this is certainly a game that I would come back to over and over. By the way, give me your thoughts, whether you've played it or not in the uh, chat. I see some of you are giving them to me already. Give me your thoughts on the game and I'll read them out loud as well. See what other people think. Um, but I do like that you can choose to pursue other strategies and choose to do different things. Getting two islands was a lot. If I only got one island, I would have certainly been able to fill up my board more and you know, maybe gotten to that 100 that way. Maybe I don't go animals next time I do something else or I use my animals more rather than trying to get points from them at the end of the game. I mean, they would have filled in quite a few spots on your board. And again, the earlier you fill your board, the earlier you get more income, more income lets you fill your board even better as the game goes on. I certainly made a mistake leaving those two single spots and not filling them in as soon as I could have. This is part of the reason when you get your income to fill in spots like that, you could forget about them. You use your coins for other stuff. Um, so certainly that put me behind where I probably should not have put myself in that situation. Um, so because, I mean, that was at least two extra coins. Uh, I mean, probably more than that, because there were several turns that I should have gotten that income um, that I messed myself up out of that. So you can uh, mess with yourself. You know, you can raid and, and pillage if you want, do theft, or you could focus on just an animal breeding strategy and getting stuff out of your animals. Um, certainly. Now, in a solo game, it's kind of hard to do both, but you could certainly get pigs and then use pigs to get you, you know, food and things. We didn't do any whaling in this game, but whaling's an action that's usually pretty good. Gets you a lot of return. It does require three workers, but if you fail, you get two of them back and you get a wood and uh, one of these. Um, so we pretty much covered everything except for whaling. So whaling works the same uh, as these other hunting actions. You're rolling a d12, but you are trying to get low. Now, the interesting thing with these whaling ships is you can have up to three of them. And as you see in the whaling spot, all three of them count. And the interesting thing is they all come, where are the boats? They all come with an ore already pre-printed on them. So it reduces that d12 roll by one automatically. So if I rolled a one, I would automatically succeed at that whaling with no cards expended from my hand. If I had three whaling boats, now every time I'm minus three. I take or I put it on it, now I'm minus four every time, so four or less. I could get up to minus six on my whaling every time I do it, and basically 50-50 chance of succeeding in whaling without ever having to discard a card. 
So that's an interesting action you guys didn't get to see me take. Again, I didn't do a whole lot of getting stuff from my animals, but certainly you can. You do cows, you get milk from it. Horses help you get uh, grain over here. Sheep, again, I should have been taking this spot, gets you three wool things every turn. And then if you've got uh, pigs and sheep, you could do this to get a coin, you know, and, and a bunch of different resources. And you get to play a card for playing out here as well. So I do love that there's a, a lot of things you can do on the board, but I also think you can get into a rut and do the same things over and over in the solo game. Let me clarify that. Because I think if you're playing against other people and they see you trying to do stuff and, it, and they have extra actions, they're going to try to block off some of those spaces. It's certainly almost always a rush to get these emigration tiles when you're playing with other people. So I do think multiplayer, it's not as big a deal, but I do think in solo, there is a tendency to do what you've done in the past because there's nothing blocking you except for yourself. So I do, for me, think that is one of the weaknesses of the solo. But again, you have different islands that you can buy every game. Now, there's only eight that come with the game. So if you do variable like I do, there is, you know, uh, two A's, two B's, two C's, and two D's. So there's certainly ways to get um, a good variety of those tiles out each time. So there's a little bit of variety there. The way the mountains comes out is different, but as you saw, I didn't really use a whole lot of the mountains. Now I could have, right? I could have used the mountains to get ships. Boats not only get you, um, you know, let you do these actions, but they are victory points as well. So getting long houses here, you didn't see me get those, but those action spaces get you these houses, which are worth, I mean, this one long house is 17 points. Yes, 15 negatives, but you can cover them up with any color you want. Uh, which is the nice part. So these extra food at the end of the game don't come back to hurt you. So there are a lot of different strategies to go through, but I think, let's put it this way. I think you can go to the, do the same strategies over and over. Certainly if you're not paying attention to your occupation cards in your shed, it's going to hurt you, but it's not game breaking. You don't have to do those things. You're not forced down a path. Um, and again, which is a good thing and a bad thing. A good thing in the fact that you can do kind of whatever you want. A bad thing meaning in solo, you can just do the same thing over and over when you play. So that's my only negative though. The gameplay is awesome. I love polyomino puzzles. This is one of the best ones in any game. I love worker placement. I love the puzzle of figuring out how many workers you have, how many you want to put on each space, whether you want to draw cards from those, whether you want to play cards. Like, do you save two for the end to play cards from your hand at the end? I mean, those are so neat. And the cards, the various different occupations, worth different amount of victory points based on how useful they are and how many times you're going to do it. So, oh. I love it. This is such a satisfying game. And that's the thing I could say. And it accelerates as you've seen. You're trying to surround things. And as you surround it, you get different income each round. And you're taking that income. And okay, now I've got this income. How do I use that every round to get what I need or, or get where I need? So satisfying. It is one of the most satisfying games ever to play. I mean, even some of my favorite games. Uh, another good one for me is... Um, is... Uh, Gaia Project, you all know that. There's a great puzzle in there too. You're thinking two or three steps ahead. But this one, I mean, that along with the spatial puzzle, it just, it tickles everything my brain wants to do. So uh, the gameplay is so satisfying. I love it multiplayer. I like it solo, don't get me wrong. And look, if it's the kind of thing you play once every six months, I don't think you're gonna notice that if you do the same actions or whatever. And you can prevent yourself from doing that, by the way. The negative is, you know, a, a personal negative where, you know, I, I don't like that I tend to sometimes do the same things over and over. I like doing a pillaging strategy. I didn't do it very much this game. Of course, the last round I did quite a bit of it. But um, usually from like early on, I like to get one of the, the long ships out, fill it up with ore and just start pillaging and getting a lot of these tiles onto my board. But I mean, it's a completely different way to go. I, it, it's harder to do in solo because you can't do it every round. You have to find something else to do on the off rounds too. So I don't know. Satisfying game, satisfying puzzle. Let's see what everybody says here. Uh... Uh, Snow says 93 looks much better. <laughs> nice. Uh, Andre says, anyway, it was a great game. You just took a high risk by sailing to two islands. That's right. So a lot of times you, I, I will only go to one island. Um, two seemed right for me today um, because of the high income and the horse. I wanted the horse from this one and I wanted the, the blue thing from here. 
and I spent a lot of time and energy doing that, certainly getting higher income on your main board, because it accelerates quite a bit. Even though I was getting quite a bit in income from these two boards, uh, you know, it accelerates here quite a bit as well. So that was a high risk maneuver. Your maneuver, you're right, Andre. Snow says, but on the positive side, I can think this can be a great game to play from time to time just because it's a fun polyomino puzzle with options on what to focus on. <coughs> with different options, yes. And I will say, this is available for free right now on Board Game Arena. I didn't show you the Board Game Arena implementation, and actually I can switch over to that right now. So let me go to Board Game Arena. Do, 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 do. Uh, it is free on there in beta right now. Now, the only difference is it uses, so part of the reasons I didn't show you there today and I showed you here instead. All right, so let me switch my screen view over to Board Game Arena. All right, so yes, you're seeing all the stuff I'm running in the background, but hopefully it will take you to Board Game Arena shortly. Let's look at games. We can look at beta games. Do, 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 do. Uh, those are the latest games on beta games. So Feast for Odin, here it is. So in Feast for Odin, you could play from one to four players on here. There's good and bad to the solo on here. The bad for me is that uh, one player, you can use A, B, and C. You could do short or long game, by the way. You could do it for one round less if you want. You could do mini expansions or not. Uh, so let's go ahead and start the game. So there's some pros and cons on Board Game Arena. Number one, all that fiddly stuff I did, you don't have to do it. It does it all for you. So literally, you're just building your board. The negatives are, first of all, for me, this is kind of small. Now you highlight over it, and it's pretty easy to see. Uh, so I do think it's a great implementation and explains literally word for word everything that happens on those spaces. And it's super easy to do, super easy to play. And actually, if you're playing in person, this is how it would look. So you get your pawns here and then you have the extra five. So your starting pawns is five. On round one, you draw one. And then over here, um, it shows. So I'm going to do a BGA play. So now, when I, as I put yellow pawns on the board, the next round, I take my five black from here five from here, play them here, and then I play them to the board. Then I take all the yellow from there plus the two yellow from the next board. And so that's how you'd play solo live in person. Um, you'd get two different colors and you work the boards that way. As you can see, there's a lot more action spaces and there's not that fifth row. So you just have one, two, three, draw a card and four, play a card. The reason I say animals aren't as great here, there's no cheap ways to get animals really. Um, I mean, this one, I guess, is a, a kind of cheap way, but you can't get two of the same. It's like one or the other for four actions. You can get both, but there's not really a good, fast way to get a bunch of different animals. Um, so for me, I think it's a little harder to do animal strategy, which in my mind takes away one of the strategies of the game. Now, maybe I'm completely wrong. I'm no expert in the game for sure, um, but uh, but I, I just don't see it as is as viable. They, I certainly feel that they felt that way too because they powered up basically the animals. They made it cheaper to get them and they made their actions better and they added those two new animals to the game. But it's still a great way to play the game. Uh, you actually have raiding and you have two pillaging options. So again, there's more options to do stuff in this game too. I think with the Norwegians expansion, it limits some of those options. So I do think Norwegians, uh, but again, most of the actions are the same. Right, so this action was the same as the other game. The only difference is here, you got another action to do it, or option to do it for two workers as well. So a lot of the stuff is the same, but I think they do a real good job here. Uh, they got all the player boards off to the side here. You know, they can show you, you can buy boats if you want uh, as with money here. They show you what's in the forests. So the BGA implementation, they show you again the progression. I think it's actually easier to see here, orange to red to green to blue. Uh, so BGA is doing a real good, uh, has a real good implementation. Um, uh, the different houses you can buy. So everything is on here, right? And they even show you the round summary marker if you want to see that. Um, and you can do things super easy in the game. So let's just, as an example, let's see what cards are in my hand. All right, so I got two spears. Let's do a spear action real quick. Uh, oh, whaling. 
So first I need a boat. So to get a boat, first I need goods. So let's go ahead and take two goods. Puts my worker there. I can pick from either board. I will pick from this board. Let's get two wood. All right, there's first action. You're going to see how fast this goes. I'm not doing a full game here. I just want to show you uh, a little bit about it. So then I will use that to buy a boat. And as you can see, actually, this move is not authorized. Why is it not authorized? Take a boat. There we go. I don't know what happened there. All right. So now you see I got a, bo a whaling boat on my thing. Uh, I would like to get an oar to fill it, but I only have four more workers. If I'm going to go whaling, that's three of my workers. So for one, can I get an oar or anything over here? Not really. So let's go whaling, see what happens, because I might get two of those three workers back. So click on it, three workers. Um, all right. So I got two spears um, and I got one oar. So, oh, I can draw before or after. Let's go ahead and draw the card before. So these are my occupations here. Again, cards are right there. Ooh, so they want me to work toward rating, but let's roll, see what happens. So I rolled a 12 and they're saying minus one because I have the ore on the ship. Clearly I'm gonna re-roll that. Oh, there's a one minus one is zero. So I get to do that for free. Oh, and the nice part is again, I got wood. So we'll just say success and it gives you everything, right? All your polyominoes are over here. Part of the reason I wanna show you, I'm gonna show you one turn is just because of how kind of slick it is. Uh, so let's see, what do I wanna do? I can trade in this. Now, if I do that, I'm really hurting myself for the feast. Uh, maybe I upgrade some goods. There you go. We'll upgrade two things. We'll upgrade this. Seems like a good first turn upgrade. And then we'll upgrade this to blue. Boom. Upgrade. Done. So you could see how fast it is compared to what I was doing. Now I was explaining all the rules over there. So you must confirm your turn. So I'm done. Uh, now you must place goods on your board before receiving income. So it tells me it's time to do income. So I could click on this board here and I can start putting stuff in. Now, if I do that, I obviously cover up the horn, which I don't want to do. So I could put this in, though, to start. And now there's no great spot for this. Man, I just did that for a whole lot of nothing. So maybe I just don't put it on the board here on turn one. Um, so yeah, see, you can turn this over here. And I'm going to get two income, so this won't let me surround anything with two income. I won't be able to surround anything at all. And I can't even do this because there's no spot over here. Uh, and it'll tell me that. See? Boom. It's red. It tells me that I can't do that. Uh, do, do, do. And again, I'm not trying to play the whole game. All right. You know what? Why not? I'll just say I covered up this ore down here. I never got it last game anyway, right? So who cares? So there you go. Uh, covering up some spaces. Or maybe I just do this. I'll cover up the horn. There you go. Never can get the horn, but that's covered up now. And then I'll put this here. Again, this isn't a full game, so it doesn't matter. Um, sure. Done. Save it. And now I say I'm done. It knows I get two coins. It gives me two coins. Now put your goods on your feast board. Same thing. Boom. Oops. Don't want to rotate. Want to grab and drag. Snaps right in. So if you want to try this game, it's on BGA. And it's actually, you know what? Do, do, do. Change my mind. Put this here. Move this over. Put this here. There you go. Done. Save, done. End of the round. You can now surround uh, goods. Again, I only have two coins, so I'm not really gonna get anything surrounded. So I could do this to make my income three for next phase, but as you saw, I had time to do it beforehand. I go done. That's one round. Literally, it keeps the yellow people on the board. Now it gives me the black meeples and I can go from there. So just a heads up, it is on BGA. Uh, I'm not gonna finish this game, but uh, that is another option for doing this. So, lots of stuff covered here. If you wanna try it, I would say go over to Board Game Arena if you don't mind that implementation. It's also on Tabletop Simulator. You have to do a lot more manually there, um, but it's a great game. I don't know, I'm really enjoying it. Let's see, any final thoughts? Solo might, might uh, need some specific scenario goals to go with it, says Andre. Uh, but on the positive side, I think it's a game you can play from time to time because it's a fun polyamino puzzle with options to focus on. Yes, no, I totally agree. I love this game. I wouldn't be playing it. I wouldn't be showing it to you. 
unlike Mike, who's constantly showing you new games that he likes or doesn't like, I typically am only going to show you games I love. Um, and this is one that I really do love. Snow says, I wish more games had scenarios for solo or at least some variable goals. You got to uh, uh, vary it from game to game. I think some games are better than others at it. I think uh, games I played recently, Arnak does a good job. I think the solo bot, while it's more complicated for Gaia Project, it leads to more varied games, whereas this is just a chaser score. Although again, with some variable options in it, same way I feel about Clans of Caledonia, it's more of a chaser score type thing. Whereas with Gaia Project, with the enemy taking actions, the AI, you're really planning around them. There's just more interaction there. Uh, so I do think there's a way to do it. Snow says, it's nice to have these spaces highlighted, but since there are a hundred of those worker spaces, it might be quite a hurdle to overcome when you start starting with the game, I think. Yes, and that's part of the reason, again, um, I think I didn't want to do the base game. There's more spaces. Even though there's more duplicates of spaces, there are just more spaces in the base game. Um, you know, and the islands actually, in the base game, this is true too, the base game islands don't have numbers in the corner. So if you want to go to Shetland, what you have to do is highlight over this space right here, and it says which spaces you can go to, which islands you can go to, and which boats you have to use. So that's a huge upgrade with Norwegians as well. The fact that it tells you exactly what you need to go to that island there is a huge upgrade for me. So for me, Norwegians is almost must-get expansion if you like the base game. All right, final thoughts from Andre here, and then I am going to call it a day. Um, all right. Getting that all set up. All right. So Andre says, bye-bye. It was fun seeing the game being played online. Well, thanks, Andre. And the reason I do Tabletop Simulator is not because I think it's better than playing in person. I certainly don't. It's because I don't have the setup to play in person. And so for me, it's just the easiest way to get it done. So that's why I'm doing it. So thanks for joining us. And we will see you soon. Don't forget, Steve's playing tonight. He's playing Assassin's Creed. Come back for that, and uh, I'll see you on Friday for Marvel Champions. I forget what Steve's playing Wednesday this week. Oh, he's playing something I was interested in. I forget what it is. But check the schedule. You'll see um, lots of great stuff this week. Anyway, talk to you soon. Bye.